grudge match. Texas A&M marches into Lincoln for a Big 12 battle of nerves, fortitude, and big-time plays by big-time players. Nebraska quarterback Jamal Lord, Aggie quarterback Reggie McNeil, the nation's interception leader, Husker Josh Bullocks. The Big 12 conference race is wide open. 18th-ranked Nebraska looks to bounce back. Texas A&M looks to take advantage of its winning momentum. A Big 12 collision, Texas A&M and the 18th-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers next on Fox Sports Net. presents College Football Saturday. Today, the Texas A&M Aggies visit the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Take your pick of the polls. The 14 in one, 18 in the other. Hi, everyone. Bill Land along with Dave Lapham. Glad to have you aboard. A beautiful day for college football here in Lincoln. We think we got a game to match the weather. First of all, you take a look at Nebraska, reeling a bit after a loss at Missouri, Dave. The other side, A&M, disposed of Baylor last week. As for the Huskers, I guess you go to your senior leader, Jamal Lord, to try to get them back on track from the quarterback spot. No doubt, Bill. This guy's a dual threat. Nobody questions Jamal Lord's ability to run. He's got quick feet making miss in space, a long stride to pull away, 6'2", 220, power to run you over. But what he's done so much better this year is completing 11% more of his passes down the football field, making a lot better decisions. Now, historically for the Aggies, you normally think run, run, run. Not the case this year. A very balanced ball club. They can throw it. They got a couple of guys to get it done with. When you go to quarterback Reggie McNeil, a super shot, and a record-breaking receiver, Jamal Taylor. Reggie McNeil, 4-4-40, so he is dangerous in space, and he can make all the throws. And he has no problem throwing to Jamal Taylor, 36 yards away from being the all-time receiving leader at Texas a &M. But the guy that he really, really wants to get the football to is his big play guy, Courtney Lewis. This guy is fantastic. Look at the efficiency and look at the consistency of scoring. Incredible athlete. What he's got is vision to see the cutback lanes. Then he's got the quickness to get the play started. Then he's got the sprinter speed to finish it. He's a home run threat every time he touches the football. Big, big time player. Lewis and the Ags will be tested here today. It is homecoming, so stay with us for that. Now it's your Bill Jones on our Fox Sports Net College Football Studios. Thanks, Bill and Dave. It's another big day in the Big Ten. Welcome back to College Football Saturday, presented by Kiyosara. Last Saturday, there was an unfortunate incident after the Cornhuskers game against Missouri. As Tiger fans stormed the field in celebration of their victory, Husker defensive back Kellen Houston reacted to what he perceived a physical threat. But consequently, he will not play in today's game as Coach Frank Solich has suspended him. Uh, Kellen's a great, uh, great young man. He's a 3.93 uh, student in, in pre-med. He does an awful lot within the community, awful lot for young people. He's that, that kind of a person, um, I, I know, uh, and I guarantee that, that Kellen had no intent as he was walking off the field to look up somebody to throw a punch. I'm sure that never entered his mind, but, uh, but he did get caught in, a, in, in really a dangerous situation. He got caught by, by surprise with it, and I think the uh, punch was a reaction to that. I would like to say that I sincerely regret what transpired um, Saturday evening in Columbia, Missouri. My actions should not be a reflection on Coach Solich, the University of Nebraska, or this football team. I would never intentionally bring harm to another individual. Thank you. Well, Dave, Nebraska's apologized, but let's look down the line. How do we avoid this happening in the future? Well, you know, it's simple, Bill. When you buy a ticket as a fan, it doesn't give you all access. It gives you access to the stands. The only solution is police security all around the perimeter of the football field, and if you invade that, you're prosecuted, and you can be fined and you can be imprisoned. I mean, it's that simple. They're going to have to do something because it's very, very volatile, the environment on the field after an upset victory. So fans, celebrate, but stay in the stands. Stay with us. We're moments away from the kickoff. Nebraska ready to go here against Texas A&M. We'll be right back on Fox. All Saturday, the Huskers and the Texas A&M Aggies Bill and Dave Lapham with the Huskers 5-1, the Aggies 3-3, three and, three, and Dykes is ready to kick it off here 
for Nebraska. There's Sam Cook will kick it off for Nebraska and for Texas A&M. These teams both have dangerous return people. Terrence Murphy, number five. Jamar Taylor, number two. Murphy averaging 33 yards per return. But the boomer, and it'll be down in the end zone. Our Kyocera lineup, we start first of all with the Texas A&M Aggies offense and quarterback Reggie McNeil. And McNeil, great speed. He can run it. He's also closing in on 1,000 yards passing this year, Dave. Uh, he's a dual threat. You know, when you get McNeil in space with that speed, you got problems. But he's got a strong arm, and he can attack all quadrants of the football field, can make every throw. First and 10 for Texas A&M at the 20. McNeil in the shotgun. Hand off to Farmer. And Farmer stopped near the 24-yard line. Junior out of Tyler, Texas. The Aggies offensive line. Ruber is certainly one of the big leaders on this bunch. Hangartner also a consideration for some all-conference ability. The backs and receivers. Taylor needs just 36 yards to become the career leader in receiving yards. And Farmer led the team in rushing the last two years. They bring Lewis off the bench. He is their go-to guy as they slowly work him into things here at Texas A&M. Second and six, ball on the 24-yard line. McNeil to throw it and does and complete first down as that ball is stopped near the 34-yard line on the play. Our Kyocera, Nebraska defensive look. Nose tackle, Ryan Bingham. Missed the last two, knee injury. They're certainly glad to get him back in that front. The linebackers, Rude plays that way. He also had a career high 12 tackles in the Missouri loss. Both Bullocks are in the lineup today. Josh leads the nation in interceptions and Daniel replacing the injured Philip Bland. First and 10 at the 36 yard line for Texas A&M. McNeil with the keeper. And he gets to the 42 yard line where Trevor Johnson brings him down. Once again, you, you see that speed, 4-4 speed, what, what Texas A&M is doing, spreading the field with four wide receivers and giving Reggie McNeil an opportunity to pick his spot out of the shotgun. He can run the football, averaging almost four yards a pop, and so doing, but boy, you, you talk about a guy that is a challenge on the edge. He puts you in a sweat. That naked bootleg they ran on second down is, is classic A&M pressure with McNeil. If you're an outside linebacker or cornerback, you don't know what to do. Germany had the pass reception that got AM the first down. Now on second and four, McNeil fakes it, keeps it himself. 45, 40, look at his wheels. And McNeil spins down inside the 30-yard line. Stopped by Fabian Washington. When he turns it up, Dave, not many are going to catch it. That's McNeil at his best. And all it is is an option off of the defensive end. Watch him out of the shotgun. Defensive end closes. He doesn't give the ball off. He keeps it. He's got the defensive end taking the dive man, so he keeps it. Now he says, nobody's catching me. And look at when you get him out in space like we talked about, he can scoop. 29 yards on the pickup for the sophomore from Lufkin, Texas, and Texas A&M first and 10 now at the 29 of Nebraska. McNeil, quick hit inside, looking for Terrence Murphy, bumped off it by Pat Ricketts. Well, we told you about Jamar Taylor and with any luck at all in the passing game today, he will pass Bethel Johnson. And 1705 for Taylor, a senior out of Mission, Texas. Last year, played well in this game. It was Texas A&M with a big lead, and then Nebraska came roaring back to beat him in College Station. And he's only 10 catches away from being the all-time leader in receptions as well as the yards. Second and 10, ball on the 29. Lewis. Gets his first carry to the 25-yard line. And Barrett Rood makes the tackle for Nebraska, the junior from here in Lincoln out of Southeast High School. You know, with Coach Fran, Texas A&M, when he wants, he loves the power running game, which we just saw there. And then he likes to have that mobile quarterback. And does he have it in McNeil? And he has that powerful inside running game. His young offensive line is getting better every single week. They don't ask him to do a whole lot. So they're simplifying what they're doing up front, and these guys are getting better at every snap. Third and six ball on the 25 for Texas A&M. Aggies first possession. Pass blocked right back in the face of McNeil. 
as T.J. Hollowell, a senior from Coppers Cove, Texas, put it on him. He went airborne and, and just picked this thing off. Here he is at the top of the screen, unblocked. He just almost picked that thing off. I mean, McNeil tried to split his hands, throw the football right through there, but Hollowell says no go. If he catches that thing, it's a race between he and McNeil for the end zone. Fourth and six, and the Aggies, who are five of ten in fourth down conversions this year, are going for it at the 25. McNeil and the drop ball by Farmer. So Nebraska holds and will take over. Let's go down to the third member of our crew, Jim Knox on the sidelines. Okay, thank you, Bill. I think it's ironic that two hours before game time, the first player on the field for Texas A&M, Reggie McNeil, their quarterback. I talked to Reggie. He said because they didn't walk through yesterday, this was his first time to step on Memorial Stadium field. He doesn't think it will be intimidating. He also says he feels great, and he's looking for the upset today. We'll see, guys. Thanks, Jim. He certainly played that way on the opening series here for Texas A&M. Yeah, it sure didn't look too big for him. <laughs> Eight plays, 55 yards, it stalls, and Jamal Lord brings out the Husker offense, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. And the pitch out, Davis, Davis, knocked out of bounds near the 29-yard line. As we take a look at our Kiyosara starting lineup here for the Huskers and their quarterback, Lord, one of three Huskers with 2,000 rushing 2,000 passing yards and 4,000 total offense. And his passing game's picked up, certainly, Dave. There's no question about that. Well, that's the thing. 11% more completions this year. 57.5%, whereas last year, he was like at 46%. That's a significant improvement in knowing what he's doing down the field. Second and six after Davis, the pickup of four. Oh, my, what a hit on that play. As carrying the football, Mark LaFleur, the sophomore, is hammered by Byron Jones. Let's take a look now at the Nebraska offensive line as we continue with our Kiyosara starting lineups. Three returning starters paced by a Remington Award candidate senior Josh Sewell in the middle there. The back soon, the receivers. Davis averages 4.6 per carry. Pilkington and Harriet, Harriet both have 14 catches on the year, and their wideouts are always known as maybe the best blocking receivers in the Big 12. Yeah, they get after it on the edge. There's no doubt about that, Bill. Maybe the Nebraska or the uh, Texas a and defense in just a moment. Third down and six. Lord dances and in trouble, and he is sacked back on his 20-yard line as Johnny Jolly leads the way, the sophomore from Houston out of Forest Brook High School. And our Nebraska defense with our Texas A&M defense presented by Kiyosara. You saw Jolly. He is their leading tackler from the group up front. Just a sophomore. has also broken up seven passes. Justin Warren is a guy who plays that rover back spot, and he has been important as a youngster. And in the secondary, Jackson Appel, the leading tackler with 71, also paces him in interceptions with three. A big three and out for the Aggie defense right there. Fourth down and 15, and the punt by Larson. And is taken on the 35-yard line as Texas A&M wins the field position battle on the opening possessions. We'll be right back. Stay with us here in Lincoln. Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier, by Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. By Subway, good so you don't always have to be. And by Dr. Pepper, be you. Nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Homecoming at the University of Nebraska. Yeah, they used to be called the Bug Eaters up here, and they've had a little fun with that theme for homecoming. They've also won their last 34 years on homecoming Saturday. A&M with it first and 10 at the 49 after the punt return by Van Zandt. And oh. going deep, Murphy, and it's broken up on the play by Pat Ricketts. They're going to call him for interference, though. They're calling Ricketts. He never really found the football, just made a play on the receiver and not the football. I think they're going to flag him. Kind of face guarded out there on Murphy a little bit. But there it is. He's not making a play on the, on the, on the football at all, making a play on the receiver. He's just early contact. He hits Murphy before the arrival of the football. Ricketts never finds the ball, and he makes contact premature to the ball's arrival. So that's a 15, that's a penalty. 15-yard penalty on the Cornhuskers. 
Well, let's talk about the keys to the game. First of all, for Texas A&M, Dave. Well, first down execution. That time they did by penalty. But they have to face a lot of second and, and third and shorts rather than second and third and long offensively and reverse it to Nebraska. They'd like to get a 100-yard rusher. Nebraska has lost eight games in a row and the opponent has a 100-yard rusher. They want to stay balanced. They're running it and throwing it effectively. They want that to continue. Here's McNeil on a first and ten, and McNeil scrambling back at his own 50 and completes the pass at the 17-yard line. Ricketts covering on the play. What a pass play and a great reception by Riley for Texas A&M. Phenomenal reception by Riley. And what a throw. I mean, that's a, that's a laser to the sideline. Comes down both feet. He does the tap-tap. Both feet in bounds. Possession of the football. And both feet in bounds. Only have to get one in bounds in college football. But you talk about McNeil, that's, that shows arm strength. When you throw the deep out pattern like he just threw, and it wouldn't have gotten wet going through a car wash. It had some RPMs on it. Riley's just his fourth reception of the year, good for 19 yards. Now Lewis on the ground on a first and 10 from the 17. And he quickly bolts near the 13-yard line before Barrett Rood makes the tackle on Lewis. A redshirt freshman out of Houston, Madison. This is a guy that Aggie fans have getting to enjoy real quick. He had 12 carries, 158 yards, and two touchdowns last week in the Baylor slaughter. 73 to 10 the final. He's one of seven guys in college football that has scored a touchdown, at least one touchdown in every game that he's played this year. You talk about consistency of production. That's Lewis. Taylor in motion. McNeil out of the shotgun. Lewis, they fake to him. McNeil going to come back wide. Nebraska surrounds him and a great job by the Husker defense to bring him down on a loss on the play at the 19 yard line. Rude led the way. They literally corralled him. Six yard loss, Dave. And what you have to do is everybody has to play their gap control responsibility. And look, it all starts up front. The defensive lineman, penetration, disruption. And now here, right there, McNeil, he has to make his first cut five yards in his own backfield. Everybody stays at home and takes away those cutback lanes from McNeil, and there's nowhere for him to go. Third and 12, the ball on the 19. McNeil in trouble again as they come after him, and he unloads it out of bounds. Rude was again putting the pressure on Reggie McNeil. And credit Bo Pelini for that call. Came after it. You know, he's not going to sit back on his heels, the new defense coordinator here at, at uh, Nebraska. He's bringing pressure, defensive backs off the slot. He's bringing Barrett Rude. He's bringing linebackers, bringing cornerbacks. He brings one more than AM can block. McNeil has to throw it away. You don't want to take a sack in the red zone. Be a 36 yard field goal for Todd Pegram. You see, he is 9 of 11, his long 42. This a 36 yarder, and it is up. Drilled it. And good. So Pegram continues his great success. He's a vastly improved kicker, and Texas A&M jumps out on top. It is 3-0. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kiyosara. Welcome back. College Football Saturday, brought to you by Kiyosara. Fox Sports Net with you in Nebraska, trailing Texas A&M, and it is Pegram to kick it off. Josh Davis is the deep man, and the Nissan scoring drive that did not require much after the exchange and great field position for the Aggies. Five plays, 33 yards of Pegram. Now officially a 35-yard field goal on that, not 36. Davis takes it inside the 10. Davis at the 30. Davis across the 45. Oh, oh my. Looked like he was going to get caught and nearly broke it all the way. They're going to mark it about the 49 and a half yard line of Nebraska. Chris Alexander made the tackle. Well, Josh Davis is a, is a guy that makes a quick decision. He's not going to pitter patter around with his feet, and he's going to get north and south. Now he's the starting tailback. Now he's got some open field. Watch him lower his shoulder and finish the run. You got to finish every run, and Josh Davis finished that return big time. 43 yards on the return, and Nebraska keeps it on the ground on a first to 10 from their own 49-yard line. And gets across to the 49 of AM before Johnny Jolly makes the tackle. And there you see how respected Josh Davis is when it comes to the kickoff game in the Big 12 out of Loveland, Colorado. 
And this senior nearly took one to the house. Yeah, he's the all-time leader in Big 12 history now. That's saying something. And he's also handling the punt return duties. Second and eight. Lord keeps the football. Finds his way across the 45 to the 44-yard line. Let's take a look at the Huskers' keys to victory. Well, what they want to do is, is, uh, is play keep away. And that's ball control. They want to go on 10 to 12 play drives and keep that explosive a and offense on the sideline. Hidden yards, field position, their average drive start, they're 10 yards better than the opponent. Last week, Missouri was 13 yards Illegal better, procedure. instrumental in their loss. The then in the red zone, the they've been there 30 times. They've set. only scored 11 touchdowns, all rushing in the field red zone. Down. 10 field goals, nine times they have not scored when they've gotten in the red zone. Almost a third of the time, there was a penalty on that play that's being marked off at the conclusion of the run. They marked the holding penalty off, so now it's second and uh, long 12, short 13. Yeah, and, and in this big 12 that has really become offensive-minded, Dave, you've got to take advantage of those opportunities that you have. Last week, the average score of a big 12 game was 53 to 26. Defensive coordinators are uh, scratching their heads this week. Here is Lord on the keeper, and he goes across the 50 to the 49 on a second and 13 call as Stickane makes the tackle for... Texas A&M. Now let's hear a little bit from Pilkington on how this team will come back from the Missouri loss. Uh, this week's going to tell it all. You know, we uh, I thought we bounced back well in practice this week. Um, the loss was huge. We weren't expecting that, but it's going to be how we bounce back. And Texas A&M is going to give us all we want, and we just got to come out and take care of business one game at a time, starting with A&M. Lord comes out with the throwing game and completes this one to Fuellen. Jones makes the tackle. Isaiah Fuellen, a freshman from Germany. And he's a guy they're excited about around here. He's got two receptions. His first one was for a touchdown of 43 yards earlier this year. He's the guy that can stretch the field. He's fleet of foot. And they really, really are excited about his big play potential. 13 yards on that pickup, and it's first to 10 at the 35-yard line. And Lord being run down on this one, trying to stretch it to the sideline. And Lord tackled on the play as Smith and Manning were in on the action for Texas A&M. Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for A&M, said he has to change up the quarterback pitch man responsibilities defensively for A&M. He cannot do the same thing every time because Jamal Lord will get a handle on it and abuse it. That time, Lord was a little bit apprehensive, a little bit unsure who had him, who had the pitch man. Well done by the AM defensive football team. Look at him crowd the line of scrimmage here. Manning's first tackle for loss, second and 12 as a result. Davis scoots across the 30 and then bangs his way down near the 27 on the tackle. His momentum going forward, and Jackson Appel, sophomore from Friendswood, Texas, for the Aggies, makes the tackle. Let's go down to Jim Knox. Real quick, Bill, I got to show you something. Nebraska Cornhusker wide receivers, the best in college football when it comes to downfield block. And I've talked to Ross Pelkington before the game. This is his goal right here. He comes off the line of scrimmage. He said inside run, plain and simple. He shields the dummy right here. Inside, outside run, a sweep, the option. He's outside right here. Thank you, Herbie Husker. Right there, you got to watch these guys. They are the best in college football, guys. Watch out, Noxie. Herbie Husker packs a mean forearm. Yeah, no, I wouldn't call him dummy if I were you. <laughs> That's right. Third and two, the ball at the 27. And Nebraska, power game, gets the first down here. Patrick makes the tackle. Oh, this, again, Josh Davis. This is the the traditional power running game as you described. Bill, watch the left guard pull. He'll pick up the fullback. Judd Davies and 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 watch the guard. Look, they're back. They're pre -walt, That is, they're shoulder pad to shoulder pad, and through the hole goes Davis. That's typical Nebraska power football. Pull a backside guy and outnumber you at the point of attack. Nebraska top running team in the Big 12, and Lauren will take it in. Touchdown, Huskers. Jamal Lord. No question this guy can run the football. I mean, who's the uh, single season rushing leader in, at, at the quarterback position in Nebraska history? This guy. Watch 49 Manning miss. He'll miss the tackle. The linebacker Manning can't, comes off the block, misses the tackle. Lord takes it to the house. Pilkington is holding with uh -oh. Houston being out 
and they have a problem here. Houston remembers the player that was suspended and Pilkington on the hold as Dykes trying to get the PAT and it falls apart on them. So it's a 6-3 Husker lead with 5.01 to go in the first quarter. You're watching it all on Fox Sports Net. Don't forget, Fox NFL Sunday comes your direction. Doubleheader game number one, Packers and Rams, and followed by the Bucks and the 49ers. Great action from the NFC. The NFC is on Fox. Nebraska to kick it off. Coke. Murphy at the three. 15. Murphy streaks across the 30. Boy, these teams have electrifying return games here today. Let's go back to the point after, though. Remember, Houston suspended for the game, normally the holder, Dave. And Pilkington, Pilkington, the surest wide receiver, sure-handed wide receiver, perfect snap, never gets it down, never even gets it on the team. So the suspension of Houston comes back to bite Nebraska. That point, see how big it is. A lot of times the missed extra point comes back to be a factor during the course of the football game. Let's see if that's the case this time. Nissan scoring drive, seven plays, 51 yards. That man lowered 22 yards for the TD run for Nebraska and gets his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Now it's Texas A&M, first and 10 from the 33. They've been averaging over eight yards on first oh, down. An interception. Bullock. Bullocks. And Bullocks takes it inside the 35-yard line. His seventh interception he came in tied for the national lead and Trevor Johnson helped set him up by putting pressure on the quarterback well he just tied the Nebraska single season interception mark right there with his seventh one more and he is the single season record holder and this is only game number seven he does a good job of what reading McNeil's eyes watch him right here break on the football reads McNeil's eyes good route recognition he breaks on the ball goes airborne Wins the jump ball. Now he's saying that's number seven. I'm going to secure it. Sophomore from Chattanooga, Tennessee, sets up the Nebraska offense, and the pitch goes to David Horn on his first carry. He's knocked down around the 27. Let's take the big look on that interception. Well, you got a deal. Here he is. Watch Bullock now. This is a zone. Zone coverage. Watch him dropping. Now he's reading the quarterback's eyes. And here he comes. He's going to break on the football. He says, I see it. I'm getting it. That's excellent route recognition once again. Seeing the big picture, breaking on the football with some suddenness. The fake as Horn keeps the football and he made the right decision. It first looked like he was going to get hit. He goes to the 22, should have a first down. Ronald Jones made the tackle. Let's go down to Jim Knox. Bill, as Dave was just saying, Bullock's reading his eyes all the way, and that's exactly what he said when he came to the bench. He said, all I did was drop back. I saw Reggie's eyes, and that's what happened. I just read his eyes the entire way. Yeah, that was a good read, and that's the 22nd takeaway for Nebraska. This is only the first half of Game 7. Last year, they had 21 takeaways for the season. And again, they're going for the end zone, and Horn denied as he is knocked out of bounds inside the four-yard line by Jones. The one-two punch of Davis, now David Horn. And again, Horn, this is what he brings to the table. A little bit of make you miss and then speed to the edge. Watch him accelerate once he sees the corner. A pretty good block at the second level. Taking the linebacker out and giving Horn an opportunity to take to the corner. Horn's got the speed. Davis will pound you, and then the change of pace guy, Horn, comes in to finish it. And Horn. Makes it a first and goal at the three yard line. And they hand it off to Davies and Judd, the senior from Omaha, stopped by Brian Patrick. And we talked a little bit earlier about red zone and what Nebraska has been doing and the success they've had there, Dave. So interesting if they make this turnover pay off. And in, in these uh, 30 opportunities, 11 touchdowns are all rushing. Nine no scores though, five missed field goals and four turnovers in 30 attempts. That's not productive enough. Second and goal from the one and Horn trying to scoot it. He did. Touchdown Nebraska.
The Huskers take advantage of the turnover. Well, it's, football's a simple game, and it's all about pad level. Low man wins. And, and Bullock's set it up with the interception in seventh of the season, tying the single season record, and Horn finished it. And he got his pad level lower than everybody else's, got underneath them, and burrowed into the end zone. Dykes, who had been 12 of 12 coming into the ball game, this one, a good snap, good hold, and it is good. So Nebraska, after being down 3 0, answers with a pair of touchdowns. It's 13 to 3. Let's go over Texas AM. Horn with a touchdown as he just does get into the end zone. Yep, the tip of the football just has to cross the very front of the white line right here. Does he get there? He burrows underneath everybody. Very, very close, but the official, you know, the ball somewhere under here. The official uh, makes a judgment call. That's the 12th touchdown in the red zone in 31 attempts in the red zone, all on the ground for Nebraska. And Nebraska with Cope to kick it off. Murphy will take it. Say, let's bring it back out to the 20. So Texas A&M had the two nice opening possessions. They got a field goal on the second, then the turnover set it up, and our Nissan scoring drive for Nebraska, a short one thanks to the seventh interception of the year by Josh Bullock. Just five plays, 33 yards, and 133 for Horn to take it in for the Huskers, and Horn getting his fourth touchdown of the year. And now Reggie McNeil, who was picked off for the third time this season, comes back out, first and 10 at the 20. McNeil has seven touchdown passes. Out of the gun, Farmer. Got a couple to the 23-yard line. Rude and company were there. That time, Nebraska, Bo, Bo Pelini, just, he brought his safety, and he brought his speed linebacker, and he brought his safety on a blitz. Sometimes you blitz to stop the run, as well as pressure the quarterback. And Bo Pelini, his mentality defensively is a get after you. He's not going to counter punch. He's not going to let the offense punch him and him counter punch. He's going to punch the offense and make them counter punch him. Second and seven ball at the 23. McNeil delayed and handed off to Lewis. And as a result, Lewis is stopped by Trevor Johnson just across the 20 yard line. So third and long coming up now for Texas A&M. This Nebraska defense is roaring today. That was the same dive option that McNeil busted for big yards in the first quarter. That time Johnson played the dive man perfectly. I think if McNeil had an opportunity to repeat that play, he wouldn't have given it to the dive man. He would have kept it like he did earlier in the game. Nebraska's total defense, best in the Big 12, second in the country, allowing just 257 yards. It's third and nine for the Aggies. At the 21, McNeil. Oh, intercepted. Rude, rude. He will score. Flag on the play. It's celebration in the end zone. Flag in the end zone. Got to be. And they're not booing, they're rooting here. Yeah. As Rude took it 26 yards on the interception return, his first INT of the year, junior Barrett Rude. He, he was hit out of bounds, Followed Bill, by, a dead ball, by McNeil. Personal foul on the original offensive team. 15 yards will be administered on the kickoff. It's a personal foul hit out of bounds. Barrett Rude. Makes a great play coming underneath. McNeil never sees Barrett Rude cut underneath in his coverage, and he just picks McNeil clean. Big, big interceptions by McNeil in frustration. He hits him late out of bounds. And Dykes tacks on another point. And Nebraska, the turnover game going again. Rude 26 yards on this one. TD Nebraska. 75 points off turnovers this season. Two touchdowns here today following turnovers. This one directly off the turnover. And again, Cope 
Booms it into the end zone and beyond into the stands. Uh, One that, more look at Barrett Roots. That's play. because of that 15 yard on sportsmanlike conduct penalty. Watch, watch right here. Blitz. Roots got the underneath coverage. He cuts underneath. McNeil never sees him right there. He never sees Rude. And now Rude's got golden goal posts in mind. Takes to the corner of the end zone. Then watch McNeil hit him out of bounds. Rude runs out of bounds after he scores. McNeil blasts him. That's the 15 yard personal foul. And that's why they kick the ball into the stands. Well, and don't forget, Rude had the fumble return for a touchdown against Oklahoma State in that Big 12 season opener yeah. back in August. And that was a huge play in a game that the Cowboys at one point thought they were going to go ahead and win. Nebraska, boy, the defense just, after a slow start, dominating the game right now. First and 10 for McNeil and crew. He will keep this one. And he is double teamed and sandwiched around the 24 yard line by Trevor Johnson and crew. And let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill. Hey, guys, real quick. Jeff Hangard in the center, and McNeil had a discussion on the sideline. McNeil came over to him. Reggie said, hey, why didn't you hear the snap? He said it was too loud. They tried to go on hand signals, but what happened, you saw on that interception, he was out of sync. Reggie said he was just out of sync on that play because he got the ball way too soon. Uh, Reggie never saw Barrett Root. He saw the blitz coming to his, in, into his face in the front side. He never saw Root cut underneath in coverage. I think it was just a great coverage called by Polini. Second down and six the ball on the 24 yard line. McNeil going to the air again nearly picked off again as Pat Ricketts made the bone crushing hit. Nebraska challenging every catch. Every play is contested by this black shirt defensive football team. Anthony Wright on the reception that time his first of the day for Texas A&M. Wright's third reception of the season. First to 10 from the 33. Courtney Lewis, ankle tackle near the 35. Our Bank of America higher standards. We've been talking about Nebraska's defense. Well, it certainly fits that title as this Nebraska defensive unit. Look at those numbers. Boy, they're in the top 10 in five different categories, top 20 in six of them. And they talk about a defense that's bouncing back. Last week, a nightmarish fourth quarter, 24 points on this defense by the Missouri Tigers. Today, they're making amends for that. They are bouncing back big time. 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. McNeil dancing, scoots up the middle. Nice job by Reggie McNeil on a second and eight as he gets to the 42-yard line. And it'll be third and short with 25 seconds to go in this first quarter. Demario Williams made the tackle. Aggies need to settle down here, Dave, just to get their uh, bearings again as AM has just shocked them with this 20 to 3 lead, or the Nebraska shocked AM right. with the 23 lead. Well, I think what, what AM has to start doing is use Nebraska's aggressiveness and overzealousness against them. A lot of misdirection and use that speed and quickness against Nebraska because right now it's going in their favor. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. The Nebraska Cornhuskers 20, Texas A&M 3, defense dominating. You're watching College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, presented by Kiyosara. And here are our first quarter stats brought to you by Lincoln. And there it is. Wow. Two touchdowns off of turnovers, and that's the difference in the football game, basically. Other than that, you know, it's, it, it looks like it should be a lot closer game. Same in first downs, total yards not that far apart. But when you turn the football over and give your defense a short field to defend and give the opposition a short field to score to negotiate the points, you're in trouble, and AM got in trouble. Third and one of the 42 to start the second quarter for Texas AM. McNeil under center. Play action. And incomplete at the 45-yard line as he was trying to hook up with Keith Joseph, the junior from Houston. Joseph with five receptions on the year coming in. So now the Aggies will have to kick it, and Cody Skates, their all-star punter, is out. Did not make the trip. 
as uh, some type of leg injury has sidelined him. And as a result, Jacob Young will do the kicking. Young has punted 12 times this year for a 39.1 average. And Josh Davis is the lone deep man for Nebraska. Yes, yeah, Gates hurt his leg on a, a kickoff down in Baylor, or against Baylor last week at AM at College Station. They kicked off so many times, but he just cut the team. So Young. Booms this. Nice. Nice. Davis got away from it, takes an Aggie bounce then, and rolls dead near the 10 yard line. So Nebraska will take over after a 48 yard punt, first and 10, and they will mark it at the 10 yard line. Well, right now on the season, Nebraska is plus eight in the turnover department, AM is minus five. And it's a, been a big, big factor. 23 takeaways in less than six and a half games right now for the black shirt defense. Last year, as I said, they only had 21 takeaways in 14 games. So the defense has stepped up. First to 10 and Horn to the 15 yard line, picks up five before Thornton makes the tackle. Yeah, you look at turnovers in that they came in third, Nebraska, in the Big 12 in turnover margin and 14th nationally. They've only added to that today. And the Aggies, 10th in the league and 85th nationally, minus a half per game as far as turnovers. It's certainly been huge here this afternoon. Second and five for the 15. And again, the ground game rolls out to the 30 yard line as Crewall gets his first carry. Steve, a junior. And He's tackled by Everett Smith. First down, Huskers. Well, this is showing dominance up front. Here's the fullback right behind Lord. Let the big dog eat. Let the big lineman come off, block people, and give it to your fullback. Pretty good job. Good quick little trap by the right guard. Sprung Crewall. They do all that blocking. Hey, give him a bone. Throw him a bone. Let the big dog eat a little bit. Nice effort. 16 yards, his longest run of the season. And Barney Cotton, offensive coordinator, he, he likes to have those fullbacks involved. You know Barney real well from the old days in the NFL. Llewellyn this time with the football and a flag is thrown. Well, it looks like it might be a hold on the edge. Maybe calling Nebraska for a hold out there on the on the perimeter. Face mask. And out grabbing that face mask uh, is Manny for Texas A&M. Face mask by the defense, five yards from the end of the run, first down. It's uh, it's incidental. Here he comes. It's incidental. It's not 15. It's not the flagrant. Gets it on the right there. Gets it on the grill, and uh, they called him for five because he released that hand pretty quickly. Dave, the way this one's going, Lord's only thrown the ball once today, completed for 13 yards. Run, run, run. Nebraska may take advantage here of a little play action, you think? Well, I, and I think they did want to run the ball for, for that time of possession, Bill, play keep away and keep AM's explosive offense on the sideline. They came in running the ball 80% of the time. You're, you're right, though. AM is starting to crowd the line of scrimmage. They have no choice. Look at, look at everybody right, right at the line of scrimmage here. And Lord sets up to throw. Comes out on the flank and got a man inside the 48 yard line of Texas A&M. Dusty Kaiser. Kaiser comes up with the reception and that will, let's see if it's gonna move the change or not. Looks like they'll be just a little short. Keelan Jackson made the tackle. First career catch for Kaiser. So they go to the throwing game, but not to maybe a Pilkington or a Harrion, two guys that lead them in receiving, but instead it is Kaiser with his first grab. And Frank Solis getting everybody involved. Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator, wants to get as many people into the flow of the game as he can. Second and one. Llewellyn in motion back toward the line. And he's going deep. Lord going deep again. And it, oh, oh, it's incomplete. <laughs> it went in and out of the hands of Llewellyn as Jonte Buell was covering on the play, among others. Almost had a real collision down there. Flag is thrown on the play. Might be holding on Nebraska. We'll wait and see here. Official Tom Allers will give us the call. Holding by the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Still first down. 
Well, Flewellen came in motion and then just took it deep. And Lord, Lord underthrew him. And Lord can get the ball down the football field. Watching practice, he threw the ball deep more accurately than he did short and intermediate. He's got plenty of arm strength. Thrown for 628 yards, four scores, three interceptions coming in today. You see last week against Missouri, a season high, 146 passing yards. It is second down now and 11 following the penalty. Nebraska at its own 41-yard line, but with a 20-3 lead. Lord again, play action, and now scrambling, trying to get away from Smith and crew, and he unloads this one on the Aggie sideline. Just threw that one away. Nowhere to go with the football. Texas A&M is moving late at the line of scrimmage. Their defensive line is shifting one way or the other, depending on the formation, to the tight end, away from the tight end, and they're doing it very, very late in the cadence. And that time it, uh, it caught uh, Nebraska a little bit. Paul Torber is doing a good job of moving his players up front, the defensive coordinator. It caught Nebraska a little bit flat-footed in protection. Third and 11. And Lord flushed out of the pocket again. Jamal will again throw this one away. Well, that's what happens when you get off schedule. Talked about, uh, you know, putting A&M wanted to put Nebraska in a lot of second and third and longs. That's the reason why Nebraska's offense is not built for those long down and distances. They like to hammer the football and, and have second and third and shorts. Yeah, it certainly limits things for the Huskers if you win first down, and A&M had not been doing that until this possession. Fourth and 11. Van Zandt, who returned the earlier punt, is deep as Larson is back for Nebraska. Watch a &M coming here now. Fourth and 11 from the 41. Nice, nicely picked up. Van Zandt. And he is hit at the 12-yard line. 20 to 3, Nebraska. We will take a brief break. We'll be right back here in Lincoln. Watching Fox Sports Net. Last year versus Oklahoma, then redshirt freshman Missouri quarterback Brad Smith rushed for 213 yards on 26 yards, including two touchdowns, but fell just short of upsetting the Sooners 31-24. Oh, you ranked number three at the time. Well, guess what? They get another opportunity. College football Saturday continues on Fox Sports Net. It's Missouri now ranked number 24 against number one Oklahoma, 7 p.m. Eastern from Norman. Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, John Radigan will have the call for you here on Fox Sports Net. And boy, Smith threw the ball for well over 100 yards. He had 350 yards offense against Oklahoma last year. McNeil on first to 10, a dangerous flip, and it's complete. 20, 25, 30, and still on his feet near the 40-yard line. And Jason Carter, great run after a dangerous flip to it. Yeah, he's the A-back. And they want to get him on the field, get him involved. Former quarterback, look at him, come down the line of scrimmage in the pitch to Carter. Now down the football field, watch Murphy working, blocking right here. Excellent job by, right here. Watch Murphy to get some, some extra yards by sustaining a block down the football field against McPherson. Excellent, excellent effort by Murphy. Carter, 28 yards in the pickup for Junior out of Caldwell, Texas. He had three carries for 43 yards on the run coming into this game. First and 10 at the 41 for McNeil. Nice job of following a block. Cuts it back across midfield. Oh, my, he is rocked Whew. as he is slammed down at the 46-yard line. Trevor Johnson with a bone-crushing hit. Well, it started with Farmer's block. And, you know, when McNeil's in the shotgun, it's a two-back set. Watch Farmer lead him up through the hole, and Farmer makes a nice block. Now McNeil's off to the edge, but Johnson says, eh, eh, no cut back here. I'm going to blow you up from behind. I didn't know you could read his lips. Man, that was good. You talk about it. You got to check your feelings after a hit like that. Make sure they're all secure. First and 10 at the 46 now. Texas A&M trying to fight its way back into this one, trailing by 17. McNeil to throw. And he's got Murphy complete for a first down at the 33-yard line. T.J. Hollowell makes the tackle for the Huskers. Terrence Murphy, the receiver. Well, we talked about Murphy as a return guy, but look at this. Almost 24 yards a touch, number one in the country. And then all-purpose yards. Talk about him returning the football, catching the football. 
you know, he's amongst the nation's leaders in that category as well, ranking uh, 27th in all-purpose yards. Remember, we noted Jamar Taylor trying to break a record. He has yet to come up with anything here. He's trying to become the all-time leading receiver in yards and in receptions. McNeil flips again to Carter, and Carter, lots of room, 15, and down near the 10-yard line before Pat Ricketts and Bullocks are there. Boy, the timing of that is extraordinary by McNeil. He almost, he has to trust the fact that Carter's got a good relationship. You only, watch, Carter, watch him come right here. Now, McNeil doesn't see him. McNeil just has to trust that he's there. And that's timed up perfectly. Relationship for Carter with his quarterback, McNeil, was outstanding. And he gave him the blind pitch and off to the races. Great design by Coach Fran offensively. And Les Canning is his old coordinator. 21 yards. Carter, two carries, 49 yards. First down and 10 from the 11. McNeil, the pitch oh. again. And this one still loose. Nebraska's got it, I believe. Bernard Thomas got his hand on it. The defensive end for Nebraska got his hand on the pitch when McNeil was trying to pitch it, and he knocked it on the turf. Williams recovered it as Derek Farmer could not cover it up. There you see Farmer number one coming off. Let's take a look and see what happened. Well, just an excellent effort. Watch right here. Defensive end is going to get his hand on the pitch. Watch him come off the block. Watch his left hand, boom, he deflects the pitch. The pitch is knocked backwards. Now Farmer's like, oh man, I'm in trouble. And it's a grease pig, he can't come up with it. And Williams comes up with his third fumble recovery in the season. That guy is a stat stuffer, Demario Williams. Now Nebraska, Davis, 25, good hard run, taking it to the outside and to the 26 yard line. Well, Turnovers, we've talked so key in this game. The third turnover today for Nebraska to pick up and what they started at plus three. You know, last week, turnovers were a bugaboo for them against Missouri as they looked like they were going to stay unbeaten rolling into the fourth quarter. Missouri outscored them 27 to nothing in that game. Nebraska lost four fumbles in that one. Today, they're back on track. Tate Thompson. Makes the tackle on that play. Jones also there. And once Nebraska has you on your heels, they just try to pound you. Pound you, pound you, pound you. And they let the big guys up, up front. Nice little trap, little onside power block. Right guard pulls and kicks out. Fullback leads through. Jamal Lord turns it up the football field. Good execution, attacking off tackle. First to 10 to 34 for the Huskers, and Lord hands it off. Davis to the 30, nearly the 37 yard line. Not much of the play as Marcus Jasmine was there for Texas A&M. The Aggies will pretty much rotate in every position, Dave. They're really trying to develop their depth and try to keep fresh people in the ball game. Well, when you don't have depth, what you try to do is run a bunch of different fronts and a bunch of different coverages to try to conceal some depth. But Carl Torbush is desperately trying to get as many guys involved as he can because when Nebraska starts to pound on you, you have to have fresh bodies late. Lord keeps it this time. AM right there though. And knocked out over the bench. And a flag will be thrown. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, who are they gonna call the flag yeah. on? I mean, I think it's just, you know, the action just took him out of out of bounds, and I'm not sure who you penalize on this. Carl Torbich is saying, you cannot penalize us for that play. I, he's confused, bewildered, befuddled, all that. Pick it up. There you go. Good call. Good call. It was call. determined that he did not push the quarterback in, but was actually assisting him from hitting the bench. Yeah, both yeah. guys were going 100,000 miles an hour. You get to the edge. And, and really, watch watch the player on the sideline. He's trying to catch him. He's not pulling him into the bench, but the momentum of Lord took the sideline player backwards to his own bench. And, and he's doing everything he can to help. That's Marcus Thornton. He's doing everything he can to support Lord. He didn't pull him backwards. Lord was, you know, 220 pounds running full tilt there. Yeah, nice job by the officiating crew there, led by uh, Tom Allers on that one. And as a result, it's third and 11 now. Nebraska is two of four in third down conversion so far today. On the year, they've been completing at 39%. 
Low board says third and 11. We say third and 10. Take your pick on a tweener play. 9-10 to go in the first half. Lord steps up. A floater that was nearly picked off as Weston had a great opportunity to come up with it. They were trying to go to Pilkington. Yeah, the ball had no juice on it. The ball hung in the air, and giving Weston an opportunity to close on it. It came out of Jamal Lawrence's head, hand funky, and hung up there, and Weston almost took it the other way. Didn't have much zip on it. Rolled, running to his left, throwing the football right-handed. Weston almost took it away. And... Van Zandt is deep. There's Larson, number 19, to punt it for Nebraska. He's averaging 41-plus a kick. He averaged 50 against a and last year in the Nebraska win in College Station. Wow. Who got this one? Man. And Van Zandt on the 11-yard line. Dodges one man. Van Zandt need a block, and the man he dodged is the one that came back and got him on the play. As it was Fred Thorne making the tackle. Watching College Football Saturday presented by Kiyosara. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kiyosara, the new value frontier. By Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. And by Dr. Pepper. Be you, nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you. College football Saturday presented by Kiyosara. Big 12 action with the Huskers 20, Texas A&M 3. The Aggies first and 10 now after the punt. And McNeil brought down near the 22-yard line. Well, the Aggies trying to get their rushing game back to days of old, Dave, as it had suffered over the years. Yeah, you see the steady decline here. And then all of a sudden, right back up to where they were back in 1996. So a pretty, pretty nice job of being balanced. Running the football for 217 yards a game, as we see. Throwing it for 224 yards a game. That's incredible balance. They're averaging 33 points a game, seventh in the Big 12. They are averaging six yards per rush before that last one. And this will pick up the average here as Courtney Lewis streaks to the 37-yard line. And Bullocks makes the tackle there. 15 yards on the pickup by Courtney Lewis, who was in an 86-yarder last week in the Baylor win. Yeah, that was a freshman rushing record there. And watch him get out over his left ski on the edge too much here. He tries to make that violent cut. And watch on the left. Oop, get that. Oop. There you go. I mean, that was a turf tackle right there. No contact. Got to stay over those skis. First to 10 of the 37. And the flag is thrown here. Looked like early movement against AM. Prior to the snap, ball starts by the offense. Five yards. Still first down. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to get off schedule. You don't want to be in a first and 15 against this black shirt defense. And Coach Fran knows that as well or better than anybody. Dennis Franchoni in his first year at Texas A&M, 158, 76 and two, his overall coaching record. Of course, was at Alabama for a couple, TCU for three, New Mexico, Southwest Texas, now Texas State, Pittsburgh State, and Southwestern of Kansas. He's he Mr. Said, fix it. He said, I'm ready to stay someplace, though. McNeil, and he has stopped at the 36-yard line. For a Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to Bill Jones. Thanks, Bill. Other early Big 12 action. Texas takes the lead on Iowa State. Cedric Benson caps a game-opening 68-yard drive, 7-0 horns. Then second quarter, some razzle-dazzle. Roy Williams on the end-around pass. Williams throws complete to B.J. Johnson, setting up another Benson touchdown. 17-0 Texas in the second. Bill? Texas rolling there. Here it's Nebraska. And AM trying to fight its way back. The pass complete to Murphy. 
McPherson was covering on the play. We are in Lincoln at Memorial Stadium where the Nebraska Cornhuskers trailed 3-0 early, but three turnovers have turned the tide here, and the Huskers now lead 20-3. Bill Land along with Dave Lapham down on the sidelines. Jim Knox, and glad to have you with us on College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera. What a venue. Look at that sea of red. That's what college football is all about right there. Boy, it's a great place to be on a Saturday. 260 consecutive sellouts here. 77,604 today, the attendance. McNeil in trouble. He'll keep on a third and six. And is it picked off? Yes! Nebraska comes up with another interception as McPherson comes up with the INT. Well, Johnson, Tom, the pressure on him. The Tom, uh, the, it was deflected at the line of scrimmage, and it was deflected by Trevor Johnson. Trevor Johnson got his hands on the football and, and knocked it. Watch Trevor. Knock it with the left hand. Now it's end over end. And Trevor gets the hit on McNeil after he deflects the football. And it was almost a fair catch by McPherson. I mean, he does a good job of, of reacting to the old tip drill. When Trevor Johnson tipped it, McPherson comes up with it. Fourth takeaway by Nebraska. Plus 10 on the season now. So McPherson comes up with the INT. And Lord going for broke on first down. And Pilkington knocked away at the point of contact there as Buell again on the play. That ball seemed to hang up just a bit. Four first half turnovers and Reggie McNeil try to settle him down. The youngster from Lufkin, Texas. Well, that one was just excellence by Trevor Johnson. The pressure by Johnson got his hand on the football. Deflected ball picked off. And McPherson now has his Second interception of the year. And Nebraska second and ten. And that was Bo Pelini firing him up. 48. Davis. Tackle from behind at the 45-yard line. Let's go down to Jim Knox on the sideline. All right, Bill. Kenneth Pope right there, the wide receiver coach at Texas A&M. Trying to calm Reggie McNeil down, saying, hey, it's a 60-minute game. you got to stay focused. Try to take this crowd out. But, guys, this crowd very loud down here. Of course, another sell out here. It's really affecting this young Aggie offense. You know, in those 259 games prior to today's sellout, Nebraska's 231 wins, 28 losses. <laughs> There's Long uh, on the sideline warming up. Long, of course, more of a pocket passer than McNeil. Doesn't have that quickness and speed. Aggies had four turnovers against Pittsburgh earlier this year. And this play stopped near the 44-yard line as Stacane made the tackle on Lord. Crown just taking a deep breath here as this Husker defense got him going. Well, Dave, there was some concern. You know, last year Nebraska goes seven and seven and really struggled down the stretch. They said, all right, they lose at Missouri, will they bounce back? Well, the coaches told us they had a great week of practice. Usually you play like your practice. So far, so good for the Huskers. Yeah, I think the Huskers were determined to not let one bad quarter wreck their season. Larson the punt, Van Zant, punt returner, waves it off and Nebraska has pinned them down near the 10 yard line. We'll take a brief break. College football. Hunter Williams, the world's fiercest fighters, are on a mission. 16 fighters, 8 advance. ESPN pay per view presents K1's final elimination at the Osaka Dome. Playing this month on Direct TV pay per view. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Welcome back. Nebraska with a 20 to 3 lead on College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera. Dustin Long comes on to relieve Reggie McNeil, the junior out of Port Natchez, Texas, 6'3, 210. He played in the game last year. McNeil did not play against Nebraska last year in College Station. Well, this year, 343 yards in the passing game for Long. He's at 27 of 44. He is certainly more of a passing threat than a run. And hands it off here. Hollowell makes the tackle on the first down play. And he threw the ball well last year against Nebraska. In fact, his team had a big lead, 17-point lead. Nebraska came back and, and, 
and won the football game, tying their biggest comeback win ever. But McNeil was confused out there. Both Laney and his combination coverages and zone blitz and packages had McNeil a little bit confused. He's seen coverages out there he'd never seen before. And so Coach Fran wants him just to collect his thoughts. Watch this. Here it comes off the edge. Long from his own three-yard line and has to throw it away on second down and four. Bingham and Smith keeping the pressure on him. Lakeve and Smith right in there. What Bo Pelini is doing, he's, he's voiding zones. Like he'll drop defensive linemen back into coverage and he'll blitz his, his safety and his outside linebacker. And when, when Barrett Root had the interception on McNeil, it was a classic case. They had bracket coverage. He blitzed his, his outside linebacker safety. He had bracket coverage underneath by the linebacker, Root. McNeil never saw him, and he got a touchdown on him. I mean, Bo Pelini was in McNeil's head big time. AM 05 on third down conversion opportunities as McNeil, or they're uh, long, listening to this crowd, trying to get the signal straight. Tries to keep the football line up the middle, and he is stopped at the 20-yard line. Very close. I don't think he's going to get it, though, with the spot. Trevor Johnson makes the tackle. Early in the game, AM controlled field position on the first exchange of possession. But since then, due to takeaways by the Nebraska defense and just taking control of the football game, they have dominated field position. AM has had a long field almost all day. Jacob Young will come on as Rudin crew head to the sideline and you're looking at Davis back for the deep one as he stands at his own 27 yard line. Low snap and he bobbled it, picked it up quickly and then gets a dandy off considering the situation. And the roll and Davis will stay away from it, takes an AM roll inside the 20 inside the 15 boy considering the way things have been going for texas a&m they gotta like that well the black shirt defense trying to get back to that black shirt reputation has today oh bullets doing a good job of reading mcneil's eyes and zone coverage there's the coverage he's talking about bracket coverage underneath linebacker cutting it underneath they're knocked the pitch away from mcneil can't be controlled demario comes up with it and then mcpherson has the Tip ball by Johnson. Just a lot of good effort by the Nebraska defense. You see him knocking balls loose, tipping balls, getting their hands on the football. Good hustle. 69 yard punt by Young, and Nebraska starts first and 10 from its own 12 yard line. And that's the longest punt by AM this year as Jones makes the tackle on Horn. Horn, by the way, has passed 1,000 career yards with his action here today. And you see the average drive start. Well, that tells a story as well. It's the worst start for, for Nebraska. It's going to distort that, that number a little bit. But Nebraska, 14-yard advantage before this possession, an average drive start. Horn, six carries, 45 yards today. Gets his seventh here, looking for a hole. And... Turns it upfield near the 24-yard line. Picked up three, and Justin Warren made the tackle. The reason that uh, drive start is so important, there is 14-yard difference. There's usually seven or eight possessions for each team in a football game minimum, sometimes as many as 10. You have a 14-yard average drive start differential times 10 possessions. That's a football field and a half of hidden yards. I mean, that's tough to overcome. It really is. Most teams, no matter how strong, are not going to go 80 yards every time for their scores. Nebraska on the ground here keeping this one and nothing doing near the line of scrimmage that time. And Jolly making the tackle. Let's go down to Jim Knox on the sideline. All right, Bill, want to remind college football fans, you have an email for us. Send it to foxsports.com, keyword ask Knox. Anything surrounding today's game, we'll try to answer those emails in the second half. Right, buddy, huh? There we go. He's, he's pumped, ready to go for halftime, guys. Knox, he sounds like indigestion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 24. Lord. Stiff arms a man, 35 40, and then lost his balance going out of bounds on the Nebraska sideline. They'll mark him out at the 42 yard line. He gets 21 yards on the play. Oh. Jamal Lord has got long arms. Look at the length of his arms. He can tie his shoes without bending over. And watch him use this real long left stiff arm. 
right to the turf. Boom. That's just knocking. That's just taking him right down to the to the to the turf right there. Buell. He just absolutely right there. Right right arm. Buell goes down, and, and he is so long. Long legs, long arms, and Buell. Couldn't reach it once he get that right arm extended. And Ron Brown, receivers coach, bragging about his receivers blocking. Well, he can brag on Tim Liley. He had a great block to help spring him that time. And it sets up Nebraska first and 10 at the 42. And loss on the play here to the 39-yard line. And it'll be second and long now as Tate Thompson, freshman from Garland, Texas, in the Dallas area, makes the tackle for the Aggies. And Liley is the guy that, that Coach Brown said is the best blocker. Uh, at wide receiver for for the Cornhuskers. He also gave Pilkington a nod in terms of blocking on the edge at that wide receiver position. First half coming to a close. We're inside one minute here as Lord hands it off and Horn some tough yardage as he moves to the 47 yard line. Well, stay with us on Fox Sports Net and College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sara. We'll have our Nissan halftime report. Texas Iowa State highlights from up in Ames a preview of Missouri at Oklahoma that ought to be a dandy in Norman and of course Bill Jones RC Slocum and their thoughts on this first half of action here in Lincoln a timeout is called for the moment with a third and five coming up here for Nebraska and the Huskers in control 20 to three after trailing three nothing early on well last week against Baylor marked the first time in five seasons the Aggies had two running backs with over 1,000 yards rushing in the same game many recall the last duo to do that was Dante Hall and Jamar Toombs who combined for 223 against the Cornhuskers it was in College Station in 1998 Toombs and crew the Aggies won that game 28 to 21. Dante Hall, how about what he's doing in the National Football League with the Kansas City Chiefs? Dante Hall, a candidate for MVP, but what a tandem there. Toons pound you. Dante Hall, make you miss. Amazing. Boy, and speaking of Hall, you ever seen anybody have a return streak the way he has? Oh, incredible. And then look at what we got going on in these two programs, Bill. They're the biggest providers in the Big 12 of, 12 of NFL talent. Nebraska leading the conference, 32 former Huskers in the National Football League. The Aggies have 31. That's pretty good talent base right here in this conference. And they're not all going to the NFL. The Nebraska also has nine players who have already graduated that are right. playing on this team. So don't get the idea that it's NFL or bust for either of these programs. Nebraska keeping it on the ground on the third and five and got the first down as Davies the senior fullback from Miller North High School in Omaha gets the carry and that'll move the chains and barring a turnover assures Nebraska keeping the football going into the locker room let's see if they want to get one more here now Dave first and ten and they'll hold it up Trying to quick snap it a little bit there. <laughs> Timeout called by the Aggies. The Aggies talk this one over to make sure they don't get burned as Dennis Frantroni and crew, boy, they've got a tough road to go. And after the win over Baylor last week, they're playing just a rigorous schedule. And next week, they've got Oklahoma State and then Kansas at home before road dates at OU and Missouri. Reggie McNeil on the sideline for the moment. Well, Nebraska, we talked about, they're trying to pass a little bit more, but their running game has been so strong, and that usually has been the winner in this series, Dave. Yeah, look at look at some of these numbers. The Cornhuskers just held AM's running game in check, except in 98, where we saw Toons and Hall each get a couple hundred yard rushing. But look at the, look at the numbers. Nebraska's hung up there rushing in their wins. Are you serious? 335 yards or more, and, and just rolled up big, big victories. And today, how does it pan out? As Nebraska has won eight of the ten in this series. Well, AM's running the football all right. Certainly, you take 137 and a half against a Nebraska defense that is so stout, but the turnovers are killing them. Exactly. They're self destructive. I mean, AM has to get their own football team off the schedule today. <laughs> Nebraska's good <laughs> enough. You don't go on the road and face Nebraska and don't bring your A game. Right now, today, because of the turnovers, Texas A&M is bringing their C-plus game. That's not good enough. you got to get yourself off the schedule today. First and 10, ball at the 47, 31 seconds to go in the half. 
Lord slipped as he stepped up. Looked like he wanted to throw you. Keep instead. Got a block to the 40, 35. And tackled near the 34-yard line where Johnny Jolly makes the tackle. That'll be a first down to stop the clock. Nebraska has two timeouts remaining. They'll go ahead and reset. Looks like he signaled the spike. Yeah, looked like he was signaling the spike. Save those timeouts. That will stop the clock with 19 seconds. And Nebraska up 20 to 3. Well, the teams in the North are all still excited about their title opportunities, and why not when you take a look at what's happened in the first couple of weeks? You got four teams already at one and one, and then Kansas State, preseason favorite, Dave, is at 0 and 2 and playing Colorado today. Up for grabs, and if Kansas had beaten Colorado, they lose in overtime. Kansas would have been 2 and 1 in conference, 5 and 1 overall. How about the improvement the Jayhawks have made under Mark Mangino? Absolutely phenomenal from where they were just a year ago that uh, they were kick away from winning in Boulder. Barney Cotton calls another timeout. Back-to-back -back timeouts for the Cornhuskers. Now in the Big 12 South, a little bit different story with number one Oklahoma appearing to be clearly a cut above the rest. Texas Tech, though, the only loss against NC State, and that offense is high power to say the least. That's a great battle with Oklahoma State tonight. Of course, OU meets Missouri in a game on Fox Sports Net. And down the road, very shortly, Oklahoma and Texas Tech go against each other in the battle of Heisman Trophy candidate quarterbacks. But I agree. I think Oklahoma is pulling away from the pack on separation Sunday, or separation Saturday last week. Oklahoma separated themselves from everybody, including the Longhorns. Well, and you talk about quarterbacks and Heisman, our Dr. Pepper Heisman watch. Jason White, in many people's opinions now, not just in this area, is the candidate right now with a 69% pass. Look at that. Oh, man. 20 touchdowns, three interceptions. You look for a two to one ratio. He's almost seven to one. And when you're almost completing 70% of your passes, that's flat out getting it done. And plus the fact this guy has had two knee reconstructions. I have nothing but admiration for a guy that is that determined to finish a career in the way he's finishing. And you'll see it tonight on Fox Sports Net, 7 o'clock Eastern from Oklahoma, where Brad Smith, the signal call on the other side, is not too shabby either. That's a player. Second and 10 at the 34 following the timeout. Lord keeps now, pitches Horn, goes out of bounds. If you're thinking field goal, Dykes longest this year is 41. Clock stopped with 15 seconds to go. Huskers have one timeout remaining. That was a curious call after back-to-back -back timeouts. I was expecting a little more razzle-dazzle than just running the option into the short side of the field. Yeah, you almost wondered, did you <laughs> see something there that right. you said, all right, we, we still got time for maybe two more plays here. And with the timeout still on the board, let's see what they do on third and six. Ball on the 30-yard line. Lord to throw. Deep and tripped up in the end zone. No flag, though. Intended for Fluellen. Singleton covering on the play. Well, the, the, the scenario here is the Aggies are got their heads turned trying to find the football. Watch them turn their head. And, and once, once feet tangle up, that's, that's, that's not a problem because He's trying to make a play on the football. You know, he wasn't just playing the receiver and intentionally tripping. He turned to find the ball. The feet get tangled up. No call on that. And that was a good, good non-call or no call by the official. 47-yard attempt for Dykes. Pilkington is the holder. Snap good. And this kick is not. And Nebraska does not come up with a three-pointer here. We have four seconds remaining in the first half of Big 12 football and college football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you as the Huskers, 20 to three. This one's settled down a little bit though, even though the Aggies have been hit by the turnover bugaboo. Bo Pelini's black shirt defense will take the field again, and you saw Bingham, number 59, the big nose tackle, working his way back out onto the football field. This guy is the anchor, and he's hard to move, and, and they, they missed him the last few weeks with a strained MCL, medial collateral ligament. He shorted up inside by his return. That ends the half, and if AM thinks it's going to get any better in the, th in the third quarter, well, Nebraska this year hadn't allowed a point in the third quarter. And a scoreless second quarter. 
and Nebraska in control 20 to 3 and let's go down to Jim Knox with Frank Solich the coach of the Huskers all right thank you Bill coach you got to be extremely pleased dominate on both sides of the line of scrimmage especially defense four turnovers for the black shirts today yeah they've done a great job on on that end of it you know we've had some drives that were put together but we need to get to where we get some more first and tens and get uh, get a little bit better field position on some of those drives and we need to finish some of it off I'm pleased with uh, the effort what we're doing uh, but we took ourselves out of a couple drives defense is holding us in there. Right now, do you remind your team at halftime what happened last week? You need to finish today's oh, yeah. game. You see it. You see it every day in college football. Right, thank you, Coach Bill. I think that message will be driven home. Thank you, Jim. Halftime with the score: Nebraska 20, A&M 3. Now let's join Bill Jones, Greg Hill, and R.C. Slocum for the Nissan Halftime. R.C. Atomic Z Cars on the Hot X Factor Monster Truck. For a store near you, call 866 Hobby for you, or click on HobbyPeople.net. Catch a Wiener Schnitzel corn dog for just 79 cents. And why not come in for something new, like our onion rings deep fried to a golden brown? Only at Wiener Schnitzel. Welcome back. Nissan Halftime Report here on Fox Sports Net, Nebraska 20 to 3. As we get ready to start the second half, let's take a look at the first half stats. And there's that number, 195, 196, just one yard difference. But Dave circles the big numbers. Yep, that's the key. Difference in the football game. AM self destructed. Nebraska played a clean game in, turn of in terms of turnovers, and this is big, too. 0 for 6 on third down. Nice job by the Black Shirts. Pegram to kick it off. Nebraska's Davis is back to return. Coming up the 13. He lost it in the sun. Goes back to the 4. In trouble. And smothered in around the 3-yard line. Josh Davis came up, had trouble handling, I think, with the sun. Let's go down the sidelines to Jim Knox. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Dennis Franchoni just talked to him at halftime, and he told me turnovers, as you guys said, the key. They haven't done it all season, and he said that maybe the crowd a factor in that. Also asked him in the second half who he's starting, Reggie McNeil or Dustin Long. He said Reggie McNeil, guys, because he feels like he calmed Reggie down on the sidelines late there in that first half. Plus, right, uh, thank you. Plus, in that locker room, I'm sure he uh, he calmed him down as well and made some adjustments. Halftime couldn't have come soon enough there for McNeil and crew. And on the ground on a first and ten from the four. Well, let's take a look at the last six first half drives for the Huskers. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is look at this one. This is what they wanted with the ball control. A 12 play. Uh, Clock control, clock management, melt that clock. Everything else, because of turnovers, takeaways, you know, they had they had some short, short distances. Five play 30 after the interception, you know, for a touchdown. Yeah, you look at the score, you'd think that chart wouldn't jive, but the turnovers is what's thrown a kink into it. Second and nine, ball in the five, and Lord hands it off to Davies, the fullback. He is stopped at the eight. Now, Nebraska, when it comes to the third quarter, folks, they own the opponent as this team, take a look at the yellow highlight there, Nebraska 74 to nothing over their opponents in the third quarter and thus the most important. Iowa. 58-79, only Iowa. Right, they play this afternoon. Big games in the Big Ten going on today. And Wisconsin and Purdue, and certainly uh, Michigan State, Minnesota. Third and six ball on the eight. Wow. And great job of breaking the tackle that time by Horn, and he gets the first down and more out to the 21 yard line. Picks up 13. The guy that he made miss is the best tackler on the football team for AM Appel. Good blocking, everybody gets sealed up, but the unblocked guy is, is Jackson Appel, and he just sidesteps him. Great job in the open field, make you miss by David Horn. Horn last year, 651 yards rushing, seven touchdowns. Came in this year with 317 and three touchdowns. Good afternoon underway here as you saw that stat. First and 10 at the 22. Huskers have a chance for a breathing room. Horn again on the flip. And he was brought down a loss on the play. Well, we talked about Jackson Appel. And, and you, see on, you see on that left hand, that left wrist, this guy's playing hurt, but you'd never know it. Watch him come downhill, make a read, come off the block, and take the ball carrier down. That's pretty good defense right there. And Appel just he loves to play the game of football. 
he shattered that left wrist, had surgery. He's got a four inch plate and eight screws in that left wrist. And he puts a big Superman S on the thing, goes out and plays every week, hasn't missed anything. Look at that production. Nearly 12 tackles a game in that situation. Horn, stiff arms, 25, and Horn out of bounds near the first down marker. Weston forcing him out. Well, remember our keys to the game for Nebraska? Let's revisit those now. Well, they wanted to go on long drives, time of possession. It's really not that big a deal. I mean, that's pretty much a pretty much a wash right there. Hidden yards, that's where they've gotten a big advantage. 21 uh, per, per, per possession. Red zone, two touchdowns. They're two for two there. That's a plus. This is a huge plus. That's why they have that big lead. Some of that field position due to those turnovers. And four of nine and third down conversions. It's third and three here. And Lord slides across to the 32-yard line. Well, we'll see where they spot it. Looks like he's going to be a little bit short. The punting unit will come on as Justin Warren, the freshman out of Tyler Lee in Texas, makes the tackle for the Aggies. So the Aggie defensively group or defensive group gets done what they need to do. And they're going to get the ball back in pretty good field position here. Yeah, they didn't. Van Zandt is deep. They didn't quite get a three and out, Bill. That would have been ideal. That would have been perfect because they had Nebraska backed up. But they came close. They came close enough where they should get decent field position. Fourth and one. Larson, the punter. Larson, oh, he cranks this baby. Down to the five and into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. A 69-yard punt by Kyle Larson. And Texas A&M thus will not get that great field position. Here are their last six first half drives. Well, you see, turnover, one play. Turnover, problem. I mean, that turnover ends that drive. Turnover ends that drive. Four out of the six uh, last six drives for AM, they've caught the football up. You just can't do that and expect to beat a team the caliber of Nebraska with this black shirt defense. And as Jim mentioned, Reggie McNeil, after a chance to settle out a bit, gets the call at the quarterback spot for the Aggies. Hands it off on first and 10 from the 20. Nothing doing for Lewis that time. By about a half yard, Demorial Williams makes the tackle. And Reggie McNeil, first half, 5 of 14 for 59, but three yep. intercepted. And he came into the game with a, with a very positive ratio. Seven touchdowns, two interceptions. Now it's seven touchdowns, five interceptions. And he saw coverages in the first half against Nebraska, courtesy Bo Pelini. The defensive coordinator fresh off the NFL linebacker coach at Green Bay that he had not seen before and it shook him up. Second and nine for the 21 and McNeil flushed out of the pocket. Rude oh. calls the fumble and the Huskers have got it again. How about Barrett Rude being very rude to the opposing quarterback. Man, that's rude treatment there. Nebraska football. Well, that's three interceptions and two fumbles now for McNeil. A nightmare for McNeil. Lakeven Smith comes up with the football. A tug of war in the bottom of the pile. Lakeven Smith comes up with it. But Barrett Rude comes on the on the blitz. And there, Barrett Rude's gonna come hard. He's on the edge on the edge at the at the end of the line of scrimmage. And, and that's pretty good athletic ability to stay with McNeil on the on the edge like that. That's showing pretty good speed from a linebacker about 240 pounds. That's excellent closing speed. And he knocks the ball loose before McNeil hits the turf. Big play. First to 10 at the 12 for the Huskers after the fifth turnover. And Davis still going. Oh. And Nebraska gets six. Well, the big block was Josh Sewell. Josh Sewell nailed Davis at the goal line and knocked him into the end zone. Barney Cotton excited on the on the Husker sideline. But Davis kind of gets stoned at the one yard line. And once you have a pile of bodies, Josh Sewell can go in there and become part of their pile. You just can't pick your, your running back up and help him in the end zone. Built into the hold for the kicker Dykes and this kick is up and good and Nebraska a quick seven and rude creating it Davis with a ball Saturday on Fox Sports that is brought to you by Kyocera the new value frontier by Wendy's if you want to eat great even late remember Wendy's rules tonight and by Dr. Pepper be you nothing's better Dr. Pepper Nebraska kicks it off with Coke and in the end zone, it is taken out by Murphy. 
and Murphy has tackled it near the 15-yard line. One more look at Davis taking it in with a little help. Sewell should put a saddle on him, Dave. Yeah, Sewell should get a big assist here. Davis lowering his shoulder pads, trying to run through people, gets stood up by a couple, but Sewell says, I'll help you finish. And big Josh Sewell says, let's score in, in Barrett Root, who set it up with the big fumble knocked loose out of McNeil's hands, celebrates the touchdown. All of his forced fumbles and turnovers have resulted in touchdowns. Barrett Root is, is amazing. Josh Davis, he and his dad, Tony Davis, the only father-son combination in Nebraska history to both rush for 100 yards in a game. McNeil on a first and 10, hands it off. Lewis. And that Husker defense is fired up as Bullocks is there to make the play. Daniel Bullocks claims to be the older of the two of the twins, a sophomore from Chattanooga. Josh had his seventh interception earlier in the game. So now, Dan says, I want to get in on the act. Yeah, and, and they're twins, and Dan's one minute older. So Dan's the older brother. And there's Josh Davis on that sideline. Very, very tough-minded, tough, tough hard-nosed runner like his dad, Tony Davis, who is a fullback, high back here at, at Nebraska. They each have rushed for 100 yards in a game, father-son duo, the only time it's happened in Nebraska football history. I've played with uh, Josh's dad, Tony, with the Bengals. He was tough for him. Second down and 11 for the Aggies, and again, no success. As Lewis is slammed again, this time by T.J. Hollowell. And also, uh, Bill, got word that uh, Barrett Rude, with that big uh, forced fumble on the tackle that he had on McNeil, he tied his father, Tom. That was his 202nd career tackle, tying his dad for 23rd place on Nebraska's career tackle list. I played with uh, his dad, Tom Rude, with the Bengals as well. So, Did you play? Now, his grandfather played here. No, I, I miss, Did you play with all of them, too? I, I miss his granddad, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, Barrett... Uh, Barrett's a heck of a football player. I tell you, he is certainly living up to the family name today. McNeil on a third down, has to fire it away. Third and 11, and that'll be a quick three and out. Well, what's got everybody jazzed here is you look at Pelini, the defensive coordinator, is rude with the tackle and the forced fumble that set up the last score. Boy, just a huge play. Forced fumble, takeaway, short field, and then Josh Davis. He goes to finish it right away. First play, go for the jugular. He tries to finish, and then, hey, I'll help you. His big center comes in and says, let me help you finish, Josh Sewell. 18th ranked Nebraska's got it rolling here. Third quarter, 9-16, 27-3, Nebraska over Texas A&M. Jacob Young stands on the goal line to punt it away. is the deep man instead of Davis. Ross will nowhere near him, and this one comes to the 45, and AM downs it there. Pippins almost got that football. Pippins came close off the edge. Watching Fox Sports Net. Huskers 27-3. Let's take a look at Pippins on this play that he nearly got the block punt. Well, he comes off the kill man and watch him motion inside. And here he comes, Pippins. Does he get it? Oh, it's punted just underneath his arms. He took a great aiming point, tried to pull the ball off the punter's foot, but just missed it. Special teams captain today, and he's certainly living up to his role. Well, Young gave a look as he went by, like, what was that? Nebraska comes right back, Josh Davis. He goes inside the 35-yard line on a first down carry. And Jackson Appel makes the tackle. Josh Davis is just one hard-nosed football player. Not the fastest tailback in the country, but watch him finish the run. Low the pads, yards after contact, body lean, pick up an extra three or four. That is what Josh Davis is all about. 11 yards on the carry, and Davis again leaps forward here, picks up a couple down near the 31-yard line. And Davis for the day. Of course, 10 carries, 57 yards. It's a tidy little 5.7 a rush. And a marvelously conditioned athlete because he returns kickoffs, returns punts. Special teams contributor. Takes a lot of snaps to the Cornhuskers. He came in averaging 4.6 a carry. Second and eight from the 38. Lord trying to turn it. He does. 20. Uh, you score. Uh, Touchdown, Huskers. 
Jamal Lord, 31 yards. The guy who had the big block was Mike Erickson. Mike Erickson, phenomenal on the edge, securing the perimeter for Lord, and then it was off to the races. Lord, 12 carries, 85 yards, and gets the touchdown, his second TD run. The Aggies are saying, Lord have mercy. Hill kicked it hold, dikes a kick, and it is good. So Nebraska continues their third quarter dominance. Fantasy football players, listen up. Now there's a show just for you with 30 minutes of who to start, who to sit, and who's the player you need to pick up. Our experts do the work to help you look like a genius. The ultimate, fa ultimate fantasy football show tonight after college football and tomorrow morning only on Fox Sportsnet. Check your local listings for start times in your area. Kickoff by Nebraska. Carter brings it out. 20 and just shy of the 25-yard line. He is stopped near the 24. And let's go back to the touchdown run by Jamal Lord. Watch Erickson, watch Crewall. Watch him come around the corner and secure the edge for Lord. That's that's the beginning of it. They end up doing a nice job inside. Now watch Appel right here. Watch the poor angle he takes. He misjudges Jamal Lord's speed. Bad angle? Uh-oh. Lord's gone. I mean, this guy has got much more foot speed than you think. Ask Jackson Appel. He doesn't appear to be a guy that's 220 pounds either. There's no fat on that body. I'll tell you, he's a long strider. Long arms, long legs, but he has quick jackhammer feet to go with it. McNeil to throw it on first down, and this one is complete near the first down marker of the 35-yard line. And when you get plays like what Lord just gave us, the Nissan scoring drive becomes three plays and 44 yards. Boy, no time. And now A&M. Well, perspective's got to change, doesn't it, Dave, after what it was just at halftime? Oh, there's there's no doubt. And, and right now, Reggie McNeil is experiencing a nightmare, Bill, but it's part of the development and the learning process of a young quarterback. It really is. First to 10 of the 35. They fake the handoff. McNeil with a keeper. He's at the 40. He's at the 45, 50, and McNeil brought down out of bounds at Nebraska territory near the 40-yard line. Demario Williams made the tackle. That's a well conceived play a little cross buck action in the backfield kind of messing the linebackers up and watch me he'll do in the fake and there's crisscross now he's out and he's out in the edge and root says oh my gosh this guy's fast then he turns it upfield good blocking on the edge by his wide receivers look at sustaining the block on rickets down the football field nice execution by a m 24 yards for mcneil and the aggies he's 11 of 64 ground game wise now first and 10 of the 41 of nebraska farmer in motion McNeil, and he completes it again for about seven or eight at the 34-yard line as the reception Irvin Taylor, freshman from Mission, Texas. Bullocks was covering. There's Jamar Taylor getting a little uh, equipment reworked on the sideline. He's getting the knee brace redone. He's a guy, 6'2", 197 pounds. He's got size, he's got speed, he's got strength. I mean, he's a size, speed, strength ratio nightmare to match up with although Nebraska has done a good job on him today. Yeah, their leading receiver, and he's been shut down here today. Second down and three for the Aggies, trying to get something going here. They led in this game 3 nothing very early. McNeil on the keeper. Let's go down to the sidelines and Jim Knox. All right, Bill, just a little while ago, Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator of Nebraska, got his whole offensive unit together here on the bench, and he told them, we are a four-quarter, well-oiled machine. We're a machine out there. We don't quit four quarters. You think he's trying to tell them something about what happened last week? I don't think they're going to quit today, guys. I agree with you, Noxie, and, and you know, I think a lesson learned. And they had a great third quarter against Missouri, and then just as good as the third quarter was, that's how bad the fourth quarter was. And, I think they did learn a lesson, Jim. Ag 0 of 7 on third down conversions. Third and 2 here for McNeil. Play action. Picked off. Wow. Bullocks. Daniel Bullocks this time. Flag on the play. There are three flags on the field, Bill. There's one on the Nebraska sideline. There's, and there's two in the middle of the field. I don't know if they all saw the same thing or we're looking at multiple fouls. 12 men on the field. For Nebraska, that's the problem. That's going to nullify the interception. Too many men on the field. No wonder Bo Pelini's defense has been so suffocated. <laughs> <laughs> Players participate. 
anticipated in the last play. One, for the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It'll be first Where's the twelve? Oh, there he is. That's number twelve. <laughs> There's the dude. It's not Canada. <laughs> it's not Kennedy. You can't play with 12. That's a heck of a defense, though, when you get 12 out there. And there's the, there's the nice nice pickup by Bullocks, the older of the twins. Again, the ball hanging up there, and Bullocks is uh, making the play on it. But all for naught because too many participants. Everybody wants to be part of that black shirt success today. Reggie McNeil said, well, no wonder I've been struggling out here today. Well, give me 11. I'll be all right now. It's a big play for AM and though. First to 10 now because of the penalty. And then the trip up there by Derek Farmer. And looked like he might be able to get something out of it. Ends up with just a yard or so. Chad Buller made the tackle. His, his lineman, he tripped over John Kirk, his offensive lineman. John Kirk is, is, is slow to get up. Take a look at him right here. Watch John Kirk. And they tangle up their feet and legs of John Kirk. Ends up tripping over his own feet and taking Joseph down as well. That was like make that spare, one bowling ball. John Kirk a little hits to get along as he makes his way to the sideline. Senior from Athens, Texas. Hopefully he's okay. Second and ten. Ball on the 18 now for Texas A&M. Joseph in motion. Farmer alone back. Fake it to him and McNeil. McNeil. They close quickly and he has stopped. Inside the 14, Demario Williams is there. Got to get to near the eight-yard line for the first down. I'm really impressed with Barrett Rude's range. Barrett Rude can run. He showed it on the interception when he came underneath on the on the bracket coverage interception for a touchdown. He ran McNeil down, forced a fumble, and this this character has got some some range to him now. The year. Last year he had 91 tackles, a couple of sacks, and this year he scored touchdowns on the defense. Third down and five. McNeil. Incomplete intended for Van Zant near the seven. Ricketts was there for Nebraska. And McNeil, every time you're probably counting the defensive players up. He, it seems like sometimes there's 22 guys out there instead of 11. There are black shirts everywhere for Reggie McNeil. Having a hard time getting things finalized and executed. Coach Fran deciding to settle for the field goal down 34 3. Watch the fake. Pegram comes on for the field goal. Came in 9 of 11. Hit one earlier today. And just shy of the 30 yarder. And a flag is thrown. The kick. Wait a minute. Did the play clock expire? 12 men in the field again. Did AM have 12 in the field? Because I'm not counting 12 for Nebraska. It is. It's 12. Let's see. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Somebody, somebody Stay put. Somebody must, yeah, somebody must have been coming, didn't make it off the sideline fast enough. And now, 12 men in the field again. Wow. It looked like coming off the field with Illegal his hands. participation by the defense. 12 men on the field, half the distance to the goal, resulting in an automatic, will be a first down. Well, that's a big mistake right there. Frank Solich saying, you know what, we, we, we can't have that. Let's see if I get them on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. A couple of officials looking at it counting. They're saying, that's too many. And then flags come out. Well, they're testing the referees today. They'll say, let's try it every once in a while. Now, seriously, you know Frank Solich's going to be going, wait a minute, fellas. Right. There's still a lot of time to go in this football game. We're just absolutely giving AM another opportunity. And Courtney Lewis is brought down. Once again, Ricketts comes up from that corner <laughs> on a first and goal. There might be a slight loss on that play. Ball is going to be at the nine yard line now. Let's talk about red zone defense. In red zone defense, 10 penetrations. This is the 11th by the opposition. And, and the way you stop people from scoring touchdowns is sure run support, like Rickett shows there. Picture perfect tackle, but 10 times in the, in the red zone prior to this one, the opposition has scored eight touchdowns. Big 12's best run defense, trying to put up a wall here. Second and goal from the nine at McNeil. Unloads Lewis just out of his reach as Courtney Lewis. He's caught five passes coming in. Williams was all over McNeil, though. 
Those eight touchdowns in the red zone. Teams have rushed for five, thrown for three, no field goals kicked in the red zone, and twice the Nebraska red black shirt defenses kept the opposition out of the end zone with no score. Let's Nebraska. see how this one unfolds. They're first in the nation, or first in the Big 12 in points allowed, allowing just 13 points a game, and they're seventh in the country with that figure. And that's after the hit that they took at Missouri last week and just shows you how impressive Missouri was to come back and win 41-24. Third down and goal from the nine. McNeil. Here they come again. And he has to unload. So penalties or not, 12 men on the field or not, Nebraska again stiffens. Well, this black shirt defense is swarming. I mean, they are just running for the football at every opportunity. Massive substitutions. This is where you get in trouble. Bunch of guys running off, bunch of guys running on. Here comes the field goal block team. Everybody count. Look, Nebraska, they're all counting. There, we got 11. Everybody's doing the count. Bet all the refs are, too, by now. Yeah. <laughs> This one, they set up at the 16 for a 26-yard field goal attempt for Pegram. And this one is good. So, welcome back. Nebraska 34, Texas A&M 6, as the Aggies have become the first team this year to score in the third quarter against Nebraska. The kick comes off to Davis of the Huskers. And Davis, 20, got a little hole there, and again, Flag thrown, though, as he stretches it to the 32-yard line. John Ray made the tackle for Texas A&M. I think you get a little hold on Nebraska that will nullify that excellent return, though. And it is coming back. The point is Josh Davis make his mind up and go, go, go. He hits that wedge going 100 miles an hour. Here's the hold call. And let's take a look now at our WebMD trivia question. When was the last non-sellout at Nebraska's Memorial Stadium? As today is number 260 in a row. With 77,604. I think my partner's got a clue. <laughs> Remember Horshack? <laughs> Exactly. Boy, you are dating yourself I'm now, aren't you? You, huh? you and I, yeah. we get it. Everybody else going, yeah, right. What did he just <laughs> say? Horse what? Wait a minute. Nebraska. And let's go down to Jim Knox. He's got a Nebraska legend with him. Yeah, I recognize this guy. Huh? Neil Smith, former All-American here in Nebraska, played a number of years with the Kansas City Chiefs, also with the Denver Broncos. You have to be like liking what you see from the black shirts today, Neil. Well, it is. I mean, compared to what happened last week, um, you know, it was a um, turnover, lost a turnover battle, lost field position, and, you know, it, just, it was a bad ball game. So I, I fell for the um, a &M coming in here today because I knew it was going to be up for this one. Now, you're in town also not to support the team, but your mom has a cookbook out, huh? Yeah, she is. My mother's finally um, been working on a cookbook for like the last two years, and she finally got one coming out. We started here because this is where I started my career. Yeah, yeah I think uh, mom's feed, uh, food uh, definitely helped you uh, grow big and strong. Uh, right now. Okay, appreciate that. Neil, by the way, guys, has a restaurant now in Kansas City. Boy, I, I mean, you look at this guy. He needs to own a restaurant, right? <laughs> Knox, you pass block him a little bit. Take a set on right him. Right here? Yeah, take yeah. a set. Right, come on, Neil. Wait, I lost you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah. Show us how those receivers set yeah, right. people up, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Knox, has got that forearm shiver. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, huh? Thank you, Neil, for being so kind. <laughs> Others would pound him. And uh, uh, get that restaurant going, Big Dave would be glad to sample for him as oh, well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another injury for AM coming off the football field, and that's Jay Moore. Oh, excuse no, me. Thompson. Yeah, Tay -Tay Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, Tay Tay Thompson. On the wrong roster, my bad. So, freshman out of Garland, hopefully, is all right. And Nebraska now, third and five. And ball on the 17 yard uh -oh. line. Pitch out goes sailing out of bounds, intended for Ross on the play. I guess he thought Ross was a lot taller than he really is. That thing went airborne, didn't it? Certainly did. Now sets up a punting situation. See Larson today. Boy, what an average. 50. That 69 yarder that rolled into the end zone. Former walk on. And they've had a couple of cases of successful walk on punters here at Nebraska. And Larson just, you're averaging 50 yards a punt. You change the field by half the football field every time you kick it. That's big. 
Tim Van Zandt is deep as you see Larson standing on the goal line. A little pressure, he gets it away. Nicely done, and it's taken at the 38-yard line. Van Zandt, and he is stopped at midfield by Chad Buller. That's where AM will get it. College football presented by Kia Sarah returns to Fox Sports Net next week with a doubleheader. First, 22nd ranked Oregon State will battle sixth ranked Washington State in a game with national title hopes on the line. And then Arizona State takes on UCLA in a Pac 10 showdown. College football continues next week at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Well, this is the best field position AM has enjoyed in quite a while. They only have half a football field to negotiate. Let's see if they can get that done. Long back in the football game. So Dustin Long. And the Aggies have a good field position at midfield. First and ten. And Long rolls out, sets up, fires complete at the 40-yard line. Just shy of that, they're going to mark it. Van Zant, the receiver. McPherson covering on the play. Let's go back to the AM keys to the game. We remember we talked about first down execution. Take a look what's happened. Well, they did a good job on first down. No problem there, but I'm not sure they're going to get a 100 yard rusher. Stay balanced. They've had to run the football a little bit more than they had hoped. So, actually, the biggest problem they had, though, is turnovers. You can't be minus five in the turnover ratio and expect to compete on the road against anybody. Three of those turnovers have led to scores. One of them was an interception between four a score. Carter, the reception inside the 20 yard line. McPherson covering on that play and goes for over 20 yards. Long throws a very accurate football. You can see him thrown into a, a spot in the zone. Making himself available at that spot is Jason Carter, former quarterback himself. And I always like converted quarterbacks to wide receiver because they have an idea of what the quarterback's looking for when he's in the pocket. First and 10 at the 18 yard line. AM again knocking on the door. They got three last time. This sellout crowd trying to make a racket. Farmer dances to the 10 and then balls the football. Huskers recover again. Oh my goodness. Daniel Bullocks, I believe. Caused it as Farmer gave it up. Boy, Demario Williams was was involved there. I think Bullets, I think Bullets came up with it. Demario Williams may have been involved involved in the hit. It's just a, a great shot right on the football. Throwing the things not loose. No, Bullets caused it and recovered it. Both. That's a double dip on the ice cream cone. Caused it and came up with it. That's great reactions. Man, he got it. He got it before Rude could. That's unbelievable. That's a gold star on the forehead right there. Put that gold star right on that forehead. I like the double dip because everything concerns food in your oh, absolutely. <laughs> Daniel Bullock's the huge play, and the brothers getting it done. And Josh is nation's leading seventh interception. Daniel comes up with that big play, and now Ross on the first down carry for Nebraska, and the Huskers. 120 to go in the third quarter in 34 to 6 lead. And how proud are Mr. and Mrs. Bullets? I mean, they're twin sons, born a minute apart, are just taking the football away with regularity. The black shirts today and just setting their football team up with tremendous field position, if not touchdown. Second down and four from the 17. And again, Ross. Oh boy, he got through and showed you a little burst as Appel made the tackle that may have stopped a huge run. Our WebMD trivia question about sellout crowds here in Lincoln. When was the last non sellout at Memorial Stadium? You got to go back to 1962. And you see that crowd of 30,701. You're going, wait a minute, I got 77,000 here. Well, then the stadium only held 36,000. That's, that's what all that success has done. Raise a little money and build it, and they will come. They do. Lord, 35 yard line. Somebody stayed on his feet. Man. And then out of bounds, about the 47 yard line, Reed made the tackle. Well, I always marvel at a guy that can do that type of thing athletically. I leave my feet like that and come down on one leg like he did ACL right there at the 30 yard line gone. This guy is I mean he looked like Edwin Moses out there. Watch, watch this athletic ability. I'm going to do a little hurdle and then land. I mean that's just incredible athletic ability and, and also his, his 
receivers staying with their blocks on the edge once again. 21 yards on the carry, 104 for the day for Lord as he passes the century mark. The Huskers continue to pound it on the ground right up the middle this time as it is Ross again. I'd Kane made the tackle. I, I thought, Bill, that uh, a, a tremendous compliment was paid to Jamal Lord by Carl Torbers, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. He said this kid could have been an excellent eye back. He could have been a defensive back, and he's an outstanding quarterback. Very, very versatile athlete is Jamal Lord. That's the end of the third quarter. Texas A&M trailing Nebraska. It's the Huskers 34, A&M 6 here in Lincoln. You're watching College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Presented. Welcome back here in Lincoln, Nebraska Memorial Stadium. Bill Land, Dave Lappin with you. Huskers rolling 34 to 6. And Husker defense was questioned before the start of the season. Certainly they put a stamp on things here today. Six takeaways and counting. I mean, when you do that, you can't go on the road. If you're Texas A&M, you cannot go on the road, give the football up six times, don't take it away once, and expect to compete with Nebraska. They don't lose at Memorial Stadium anyway. When you give them six extra possessions, that's coffin wheels. You're in trouble. And Nebraska gets Ross stopped on the play here. Let's take a look at our Subway game summary as the Huskers enter the fourth quarter with a 34 to 6 lead. Six AM turnovers. Lord, a couple of TDs, is dominating on the ground, and now the total yardage. Remember at halftime it was just a yard apart. Well, the rushing yardage is Nebraska closing in on 300. As they do so regularly 15 rushing titles in this storied university's career and lord and in motion the floor lord escaped one tackler keeps wow. it and ends up with positive yards on a play that looked a little busted up there at the 45 yard line and you got to give mike montgomery credit as Lord faked him out and he fell to the turf and then he got back up on his feet and pursued Lord and, and eventually got him. But in the open field, Lord had that rack and pinion steering of a Ferrari. And Montgomery was the 18 wheeler and couldn't change direction with him. And Nebraska kick it away with Kyle Larson sets up on his 40. And Tim Van Zandt is the deep man for Texas A&M. He's at his own 10 yard line. Van Zandt, senior from Victoria, Texas. He's doing the scholarship this season, during the season. Waves this one off, and it goes out of play, and Texas A&M will take over. Right at the 11-yard line, inside the 20, executed by Larson. Well, we mentioned earlier, we showed you the standings and why all the teams in the north, it's so even this year, are excited about what's ahead, even though they've all lost at least one. Here's what's ahead for Nebraska. They've got Iowa State. They're getting rocked by Texas today. Then they play at Texas and at Kansas. And earlier in the year, you thought, KU, you go and put a W there. Well, yeah. not the way Mark Mangino's turned them around. And then Kansas State comes here. for. A, you thought that was going to be a big, big tilt, but Kansas State's struggling right now, but Bill Snyder will get them, get them straightened out. And then, of course, uh, the Colorado game that does not have the shine to it that it has in the past, at least at this point. There's that defense again. Thomas coming in all over Dustin Long. Well, when you have a score 34 to 6, the defensive linemen pin their ears back because they know that you're going to throw the football and they want to meet at the quarterback. Total disdain for the run. They're teeing off to rush the passer. And they all got there. Fourth quarter. Huskers 34, AM 6. Long operating out of his end zone in the shotgun. Incomplete. Long going deep on that one to Terrence Thomas, covered by Pippins. And just a little bit, little bit long. And once again, you're backed up. You're, you're well behind a release. Pretty good coverage. Riding stride for stride is Pippins. You have to throw a perfect ball long through a good ball, but not perfect, just a shade long. Third down and 17, and they'll be coming here as the crowd gets after it again. Long's got two wide outs to the near side. 
One to the top of your screen. Riley and Van Zandt to the right. Murphy to the left. And Long fires. Intercepted Washington. Wow. Fabian Washington gets his third interception of the season and the seventh turnover of the day. Yeah, I said uh, when we talked going into the beginning of the quarter, six takeaways and counting. Make it seven. Incredible. Coming into today's football game, Nebraska was plus six in the turnover department. Now they're plus 13. And there's a quarter left to play. And Long said, I'm going to put it up and see if my guy can make a play. Ah, their guys made a play. Fabian Washington timed his jump perfectly, caught the football at the apex of his jump. He became the primary receiver. Excellent coverage by Washington. First and 10 at the 40. Davis slams forward to the 39-yard line. Well, you're probably wondering, is that a record? Not yet. Seven turnovers today. The team record is eight. Last time, he started back with K-State back in 79. Lord checking out of the football game to a big, big ovation by the supportive, appreciative crowd. Daly checks in. The future is Daly. They're getting their daily dose right now. Daly, six of nine in the passing game for 72 yards and one touchdown, one interception. A freshman from Jersey City, New Jersey. So Jersey boys at the quarterback slot for Nebraska. And Daly hands this one off to Davis, and Davis spins down to the 37-yard line. You know, there's, there's two things to talk about, Bill, in terms of the turnovers. Seven takeaways by the Nebraska defense is phenomenal, but Nebraska offensively is perfect. They have not given the football up today. That's, uh, that speaks volumes as well. When your offense has got great ball security, the defense takes it away seven times, you're going to have a 28-point lead or more. Ord leaves the game with 109 rushing, two of seven in the passing game. He scored twice himself. Here's Daly showing you his shake and bake as he gets down to the 30-yard line, very close to a first down. So this freshman from Jersey City and six foot 200, very fitting to the mold of the Nebraska quarterbacks here. Yeah, he's tremendously gifted. Barney Cotton has gone on record in saying. I want a thrower that can run, not necessarily a runner that can throw. Daly has got a great throwing arm. He's got the quickest release. He's the most accurate. He's got the strongest arm. He's a thrower that can run. Davis straight ahead for the first down on a fourth down and two. That'll move the chains, keep the possession to Nebraska. Jolly was there. Whenever you can get a young quarterback snaps, it's always helpful to, to the overall health of your football team. Because God forbid Jamal Lord gets nicked up. You don't want Daly going in there with no experience. Barney Cotton understands that. And he's going to get his man some reps. Daly on the option. Pitches here. Davis. Good job by AM to stretch him all the way to the sideline. And Byron Jones making the tackle. Our Bank of America higher standards. How about that touchdown run by Davis? And Sewell. Davis gets stood up. Josh Sewell says, no, no, you're going in. I'm pushing you over the goal line. Give that old line some credit. That was a 12-yarder and made a 27-3 with a point after. And a big start to the third quarter. Rude set it up with his tackle and forced fumble. And then the recovery by the Huskers. And they haven't looked back. a and had little chance at the start of the second half to try to regain some momentum. Second and 10 for the 29, and Daly to throw it on the run. Oh, yeah. Touchdown, Huskers! Blue Allen. Yeah, he can throw it. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's a thrower that can run the football. On the run, Daly threw Steve Wright. I mean, that ball was perfect. 29 Man. yards. He put it in a very, very nice spot for, for Flewellen. Watch Daly on the run. You can't, if he throws it 100 times, you're not going to throw it any better than that. Right between the two and the eight. Holy mackerel, Andy. And the point after is good. And the Huskers get seven more on a 29-yard pass. Welcome back. College Football Saturday presented by Kiyosera. 
as Nebraska steamrolling AM 41 to 6. Sam Cope will kick it off here for the Huskers. We have 10.03 to play in the football game. Murphy and Carter are deep. Murphy in the end zone, and we'll down it there. Let's go down to Jim Knox. Okay, Bill, got an email for Larry Craig. He wanted to know, hey, why don't you show some Aggie fans? Well, Aggie fans did make the trip, about 2,500 of them right here. Some chartered a plane, some took a commercial plane, and a lot of guys just drove. This guy drove from Austin. How long did it take you? About 11 hours. 11 hours. These Aggie fans still on hand trying to cheer their team on, guys. Man. Yeah, they had midnight yell practice over in Omaha at a little pub last night, which, of course, Aggie tradition. They had a couple hundred strong that took over the joint. And, uh, yeah, you want spirit, Texas A&M could certainly provide you with that, and they will not be leaving early. And I'm trying to give him something to cheer about. It's Dustin Long still at the quarterback slot here. He's in trouble again, back inside his own 10. Need a little help, going to keep it now, and just gets out of bounds near the 20-yard line as Brandon Teamer was the one chasing him along with Titus Adams. Some second-unit guys getting an opportunity here for the Huskers. Yeah, Titus Adams uh, did a lot of running on that play. And when you're a defensive lineman, you're chasing those smaller quarterbacks, and you do all that running, you don't get any payday by getting a hit. It frustrates you. So Adams is going to be coming off that line of scrimmage once again. a and having to throw every snap. They're just going to come off the ball and rush the quarterback. Up the field they come. Second and 10 at the 20 as long. Fumbles the football, a little play action, and then all he can do is jump on it himself at the eight-yard line. Chad Sievers and Thomas were there in the vicinity. Our subway leaderboard, we take a look at Courtney Lewis, who has not had the big day today that he had hoped for, but yards per rush for freshman coming in, Lewis, 6.7, the best. And then Maroney, Minnesota, and you see today, that's how stout this black shirt defense is, as less than three yards per carry Two against the Nebraska. 2.3 yards per carry. And now they're in a, in a scenario where they can't run it anymore. They have to throw. They're so far behind. Third and 23, the ball on the seven. Justin Long. They come after him, and he takes off. And Long, fortunate to get him past the 10 yard line, dives to the 12. Ricketts is there to make the stop for Nebraska. And the Huskers up 41 to 6. Going to get good field position once again here. Well, watch this guy, Demario Williams. Watch his pass rush. Watch how low he gets when he turns the corner. And he's got tremendous body lean. He's the one that makes Dustin Long tuck it and run. Dustin Long says, well, I feel him. I feel him coming on my backside. I got to get out of here. And Corey Ross is now the deep man. Jacob Young, the punter again for the Aggies, and he's in the end zone. Ross got by two at the 46, 40. Ross still jitterbug it, 30 yard line. What a great return by Corey Ross. And Nebraska is going to have possession. The 26 yard line, it appears, when we come back. You're watching College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. It's all Huskers. Fox Sports Net. Jason White and the Sooners took care of Texas quite easily last week in the Red River shootout in Dallas. 65-13 the final, while meanwhile at Columbia, the Tigers of Missouri used some razzle-dazzle to upset the unbeaten Cornhuskers. Yeah, that's Brad Smith, quarterback turned receiver. And the Huskers fell 41-24 to Mizzou. Mizzou and OU tonight on Fox Sports Net, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. Don't forget the kickoff show at 6.30 Eastern. Number 24 Tigers, number one Sooners, all on Fox Sports Net. Here, Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you as the Huskers putting the touches on a 41-6 pounding of Texas A&M. And Jamal Lord, two touchdowns, 109 rushing. Really didn't need to use the passing game today. Turnovers turned this one around seven at the moment. And now quarterback Joe Daly followed the running act of Lord with a touchdown pass of his own for 29 yards to get the last score. Here's Daly again. Pitches on the option and Ross. 
Out of bounds for Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to Bill Jones. Bill in Ames, Iowa. Iowa State trying to hang in there against Texas, but early fourth quarter, the Longhorn Cedric Benson's third touchdown of the day, 120 yards rushing. Horns do lead it 33-19 in the fourth. Bill. Club. Suffered some injuries early and never been able to recover. Nice little comeback, though, the way Texas was putting it on them at the half. Yeah, that's a nice uh, for Texas. I mean, they were demoralized by Oklahoma. But great bounce here by Nebraska. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you at Memorial Stadium, where AM got out to a 3 0 lead, but turnovers have been the story as Nebraska has got seven of them today and dominated this contest from middle of the first period on. Justin Warren makes the tackle on the play here. Daly is the quarterback, and you, Dave, you were talking about they want a guy who can throw run. Well, he completed better than 50% of his passes at St. Peter's High School in Jersey City, threw for 1,378 yardage-wise, 19 scores. He ran for 783 and 13 touchdowns and seven two-point conversions. You know, when everybody in the building knows what you're doing with and you still score, you got a player. Well, yeah, and Frank Solich, who we saw in Barney Cotton right there, the offensive coordinator, there's a huge difference. A thrower that can run as opposed to a runner trying to throw. That is night and day. They, they haven't, Marty Cotton has not been able to install all of his offense yet to run at New Mexico State. Daly dancing here, trying to get something out of it, and finally forges head on a fourth down and eight. And Texas A&M holds, and will get the football back. And A&M really never gave themselves a chance today. You can't turn the ball over seven times and never take it away once like they did today. And Coach Fran is acutely aware of that. You know, the, the most true t statistic at any level of football competition is turnovers. Usually when you win the turnover battle, you win. When you lose it, you lose. And AM lost the turnover battle big today, therefore losing the game big today. And now the Aggies. Dustin Long, back to pass, flushed again. Good coverage. Throws it out of play. Well, we mentioned uh, coming in Josh Bullocks and his six interceptions. Well, it's not been just Josh today, but he got him going with a seventh interception. He's he's tied now the single season interception mark. And his brother says, hey, Daniel says, I'm going to force the fumble and I'm going to recover it. Josh, whatever you can do, I can do better because I'm a minute older than you. <laughs> I'm the older brother. If you get on the board, so am I. Sophomores from Chattanooga have done it today. There have been many, many heroes for this Nebraska club. 6.24 to go, second down and 10. Long to throw it. He hopes. Wow. There's the speed of that Nebraska defense. My goodness. Coming from behind was Shanley. Shanley's brother, of course, a great linebacker here at Nebraska, playing in the National Football League now with the Rams. And watch him come backside. Long knows he's coming, and he's trying to run away. But Long can't pull away. Shanley's faster. Shanley runs Long down. Nice effort. Of course, talking about brothers, Shanley's brother Scott plays for the Rams, so brother acts have uh, been a part of Nebraska football. It's a family tradition. And this time, Andrew makes the play here in Nebraska. 41 to 6, and they're coming after Long again. He unloads this one. It was nearly right to the Nebraska defensive lineman that was closest to the play. And I think that was, uh, I'm not sure you're going to get a number on it. As, boy, what pressure by the Huskers. I think it was Stuart Bradley that had the, pre or, uh, the ball was thrown in his direction, but uh, I'll tell you, that great pressure. And if Long didn't get that ball back to the line of scrimmage, it would have been intentional grounding. But he did get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. You saw earlier, AM only 46 yards in the second half of offense. The black shirts have stepped it up. This is a team averaging 441 yards a game, fourth in the Big 12, 18th in the nation. And Young inside is five to kick it away. Ross again, the deep man. He'll field it and is brought down. Ball. Fumbled the football. It went out of bounds. It'll stay with Nebraska. On Fox Sports, that is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier. By Lincoln, there are those who travel and those who travel well. By Bank of America, setting higher standards.
and by Dr. Pepper. Be you. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Well, the Aggies have been zapped on a homecoming Saturday here in Lincoln, Nebraska Memorial Stadium. Seven turnovers by Texas A&M. And Rude has been a huge part of that as he scored a touchdown himself today on one of them and helped set up another with another turnover that he created. And Nebraska back on the attack offensively on a first and 10 from the 29. And Dane Todd fullback gets the carry for the Huskers. Uh, it's good to see guys that don't get a lot of snaps during the course of the game in the football game for Nebraska because all week long they work hard. And these guys deserve their opportunity. And I'm sure Frank Solich and his coaching staff are excited about the fact that with a 35 point lead with about five minutes to play, these guys can get some, get some reps in a game. It's important to them, it's meaningful. Todd out of Lincoln Southeast High gets his second carry of the season. 5'10, 235, redshirt freshman. And the handoff again, keep it on the ground out to the 34 yard line. And Robin Miller gets the carry this time as Miller. His fifth carry of the year. He'd had five, four carries for 44 yards, scored a touchdown earlier this season. In fact, had a 47 yard run. He's out of Kent, Washington, a senior. Third and five, ball on the 34. And again, the toss. Well, to 21 Miller our Keo Sarah beat a play of the day boys it's, it's a hard selection when you take a look at all of the plays at Nebraska but you pretty much have to go defensively I think I think so with seven takeaways and this one was a takeaway touchdown when your defense scores a touchdown like Barrett Rude did on this bracket coverage he had underneath McNeil never saw him, and then McNeil gets flagged for hitting him late out of bounds for 15 yards. But Barrett Root, it was uh, that was the second score of the game, very significant at that time of the football game for Barrett Root to make that big play. Yeah, that second touchdown of the game for Nebraska made it 20 to three, and really uh, put the a and team in a hole they never recovered from. Now Larson boots this one away, and it will go. No, not wow. in the end zone. What a day for Kyle Larson. As Larson, seven punts, 47.9 average, and sticks that one at the three yard line. Let's go down to Jim Knox. Okay, thank you, Bill. I tell you what, you talk to any of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, they say key in their program definitely has to be strength training. Sat into a little seminar this morning. Boyd Epley, who is the assistant athletic director of performance and facility, put on a heck of a seminar this, uh, this morning. What happened is he invented something called the transformer. What this is is a $32,000 machine. Electricity is run. It sets your safety brackets, cuts down on injuries. Chevron Dunnan right there squatted 405 pounds about six times. One of the best in the nation strength and conditioning program. Of the oh, watch out. Touchdown, oh. Nebraska. Or the interception return Adams. Titus Adams, they got a, a penalties everywhere. I don't know if that's celebration or, or more. Gotta be. Adams. Man, what a spike. What reaction to catch that football at such close range. They got eight takeaways now. Eight takeaways. And this one, Long says, I'm gonna go for the short throw. Adam says, no. How about that athleticism? That's a defensive end that goes up and spears that ball with very soft hands and then spikes it and the thing bounces up about 10 feet and he's going to get penalized for that celebration but he doesn't care. Unbelievable play. Titanic play by Titus Adams. And it's 47 to 6. The eighth turnover and the last time that happened was 1979 that the opponent turned it over eight times. That was at Kansas State. I wonder how, if, if that time two of those eight takeaways were defensive touchdowns. Rude and Adams both score on their takeaways. That is demoralizing if you're that offensive football team. And this one, Texas A&M. DeAngelis will now do the kicking honors as everybody's getting into the act. And he hits it. And it's now 48 to 6. All the congrats from his teammates here. And why not? First NU defensive end to score an interception TD since 96. Grant Wistrom now in the NFL with the Rams. And Adams 
I know we don't have too much celebration day, but what the heck? You gotta let the kids have a little fun, huh? Oh, you got to. That's a once in a lifetime, that's a dream come true. <laughs> Defensive linemen dream about intercepting a ball and scoring a touchdown, and it happened for Titus Adams. Enjoy, big fella. And the kickoff. Carter, 20, cuts it back, 30. Carter, the 40, turn it on the Jets, and Whoa. break through. 30, he will score! Carter will go end-to-end, -end. 89 yards and an Aggie touchdown! Boy, he split a couple of would-be tacklers. I think it was Sam Koch, and the other one might have been Shanley. And he just split those guys on the sideline right in front of the Texas A&M bench. Just a phenomenal play by Carter, who's the A-back, the versatile back in Coach Fran's offense. But he was A-plus on that return. We are seeing it all here today as it's now 48 to 12 with 256 to go. And the Aggies for the point after. Long holding for Pegram. And Pegram's kick is blocked, and this could be returned. AM recovers it. Pippins, I believe, is the one that got the block. He's been all over the place, too. Let's take another look at Carter. And Jason Carter out of Caldwell, Texas, taking it 89 yards. Boy, he gets, he starts to his left. And watch Nebraska over pursuit. Now here he comes. And now he's got the corner. Misjudging speed right here. Here's the move. Watch him cut back inside. Whoop. Split a couple. That's just a phenomenal, that's vision. And it's an ability to make a dramatic cut. And he had both. And he executed Took it to the house. Yeah, he's put right by Ahmert, who had an opportunity to dive at him. But great job by Jason Carter. He got uh, he got Nebraska flowing one way when he started to his left, and then when he slammed the brakes on and came back to the right, Nebraska he had distorted their coverage lanes. And once he get those coverage lanes distorted, he found some cavities to take advantage of. Another reason why you don't leave the ballpark early, you never know what you're going to see. Let's take a look at some other scores from around the, the, the Big 12 as Texas in the fourth, up over Iowa State. Longhorns need to recover after the OU game. You saw the other game there at Colorado, K-State 15-13 the half. That is a dandy in Manhattan. And Oklahoma State and Texas Tech just getting underway. Missouri and Oklahoma courses tonight, 6 Central, 7 Eastern on Fox Sports Net. How about uh, Kansas and Baylor tied up 14-14, two of the most improved teams in the conference going head-to-head -head today. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Kansas beating Missouri got everybody's attention early, and Baylor beating Colorado. Yep. Handle for that one. Yeah, handle. Ross is deep on the kickoff. OB. Pegram's boot out of bounds. Well, eight turnovers today, and the black shirt defense certainly to be rewarded for it. Well, they were flagged a couple of times for eight men on the field. I bet A&M thought there were more than eight on the field all game long. Bullocks intercepts his seventh ball. Barrett Rood interception. Forced fumble by Thomas. Recovery by Nebraska. Barrett Rood forced fumble. Recovery by Nebraska. Tip ball. McPherson interception. I mean, on and on it goes. Incredible. Daniel Bullock's forced fumble recovery by himself. And then Adams finishes it off. Catch! Touchdown for the big fella. Take the air out of that ball. Dr. Pepper players of the game, the black shirt defense here at Nebraska. Robin Miller gets the call on the carry here for the Huskers. Daly still the quarterback as it's 48 to 12. And the Huskers on homecoming. Plastering Texas AM. AM provided uh, an opponent that Nebraska needed. It was a, a tonic to doctor order because AM self destructed today. Nebraska's confidence is now back. Second and five, and again, Miller, and he is out of bounds on the Nebraska sideline near the 45 yard line. Bo Pelini doing a heck of a job as defensive coordinator here for Nebraska. Put his black shirt defense 
rise to the occasion and perform for him today. After a dreadful fourth quarter against Missouri, they bounced. Bounced well. And Nebraska on the first and ten. And again, keep it on the ground as Blissman is the new quarterback here for the Huskers. And not even listed on the roster. That's how deep they're going today. Standing tall in that pocket. Barney Cotton has got some height, and Glissman a little bit taller. Stands in that pocket very, very tall. And now, Lindstrom, another quarterback, Lindstrom gets the opportunity as Frank Solich trying to get everybody into this football game. And second down and eight to go. So the Huskers. We'll see who makes the uh, next snap. Glissman comes, comes back. back. All right. It's, it's messenger plays. He's running the plays in with the quarterback from the sideline and personnel groups. He's just instead of calling plays in, signaling plays in, and don't want to have a communication problem. Coach Solich and Coach Cotton. He's running plays in by quarterback. Messenger quarterbacks. Glissman also walked onto the basketball team his first year here, so he's a multi-sport walk-on. And Wingener carrying the football that time. Well, what's ahead for Texas A&M? You know, they got shell-shocked in Lubbock a couple of weeks ago, rebounded with a huge win over Baylor. Well, what's ahead? It doesn't get any easier. Number 23, no. Oklahoma State, Dave, and then look at the rest of the road. Look at that. Look at that little stretch. November 8th, number one, Oklahoma. The 15th, they get Missouri. Plays Oklahoma tonight, ranked 24 right now. And then on the 28th, they got the Longhorns. So that is a heck of a challenge. Probably the, the toughest remaining schedule in the nation, for sure. 80% winning percentage for those remaining six opponents. Van Zandt is deep for Texas A&M. And Larson. Booms another one into the end zone. Wow, what a day for Kyle Larson. See why this guy is up for the Ray Guy Award. Oh, yeah. You know, we started today talking about Jamar Taylor and uh, his pursuit of a record, and today he shut down. No receptions, and he had an opportunity to break two records for yeah. uh, Texas A&M. Yards and receptions for a career. Well, everybody we talked about, Bill, Reggie McNeil, Courtney Lewis, and Jamar Taylor, the, the trio, the black shirts shut down for Bo Pelini. Took Taylor out of the game totally. McNeil struggled with multiple turnovers, and they got Courtney Lewis contained. Along the quarterback and hands it off here with a few seconds to go, and that ought to do it. As Nebraska bumps it to six and one. And two and one in the league. The Aggies fall to three and four. One and two in the league. Our final score, Nebraska 48, Texas A&M 12 here in Lincoln. A record-setting eight turnover day for the Texas or the Nebraska defense set the tone for this one here. Let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Bill. Coach, you have to be extremely pleased. You dominated offensively and defensively. First, let's start with the star of the show, the defense. Eight turnovers. Yeah. That's the most turnover since 1991. And we had uh, more than eight in 1991. That's that. 1991, eight yeah. to the record right yeah, now. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a good week in terms of the effort, and um, we really executed well, I thought. And defensively, they were flying around today. And if you're able to, to, to win the turnover battle, we saw how that worked last week. And especially if it's 8-0, to zero, you're going to come out in, in big time ahead. How about the offense? Jamal Lord engineered a couple of nice strides. Then you had the nice one-two punch in the backfield. Josh Davis, David Horn. Yeah, I, you know, I, I thought at times we really showed well offensively. You know, uh, there were those moments we sputtered a little bit, but all in all, I think we tied it together today a little bit in terms of what we were all about offensively and defensively. But we still got areas to improve on. We need to go back to work. Congratulations, Coach, on the big victory. Let's get one of your star defensive players here at today's game, Barrett Root. Complete domination on defense, eight turnovers. That's the most since 1991. I guess you're not aware of that. No, I, I don't know about that, but uh, yeah, you know, we, we weren't very happy with how we performed last week against Missouri and uh, 
we wanted to come out, you know, kind of on a mission today and show that, you know, that's not the way uh, we play defense around here. How about the interception touchdown right there for you? Yeah, you know, I, it was a blitz, and uh, I saw him check it off, so I kind of knew he was, uh, he knew there was a blitz coming, and usually that's kind of the hot read for him, so I kind of just ran to it. Yeah, you were all over the field today. I don't know if you realize this, but you broke your dad's record of most tackles. You had like eight today. Yeah, that's what uh, Keith just told me. Uh, I would have had a record, uh, his record for fumbles, too, but uh, Dan Bullock's recovered one right in front of me, so uh, I can't get it all, I guess. I guess it's safe to say that nasty taste of losing to Missouri in the fourth quarter last week is out of your mouth. Yeah, it'll be out for a little bit, you know. We, you can enjoy this for about a day. That's kind of 24-hour rule. Then on Monday, you know, kind of get ready to go again. Right, Eric, congratulations on the nice performance. Bill? Thanks, Jim. No question, Dave. This Nebraska team is a vastly improved bunch over a year ago. Well, they are. And, and on the defensive side of the football, it is night and day. A totally different scheme. Bo Pelini, very, very aggressive with his defensive football team. Instead of counterpunching, they're punching. And it's it's remarkably different. Lord and crew got it done in many ways today. First and ten provided by PBI Virtual Media Services, LLC. Now this is Bill Ann for Dave Lappin with Jim Knox. Saying so long from Lincoln. Nebraska 48. A&M 12 the final. Now let's join Bill Jones, Greg Hill, and R.C. Slocum in the studio.